President Obama and urging his impeachment over a local Long Island Expressway and other Long Islanders have been participating in this event and, and in other locations. But I was doing it over the Long Island Expressway in Nassau County, and I had been doing it for about a year, every Friday for two hours. And then the police came up on this one occasion, and they said that I was causing a public safety hazard and arrested me for a criminal nuisance and disorderly conduct. So you have been engaging in the same protest for a year or more before they finally arrested you for it. I started in September 2013, and I was arrested in July of 2014. I didn't do do much protesting in the winter because it gets really cold and snowy yeah. up here, sure, as yeah, you know. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, for I'll probably say 50 some odd times. So had you ever had an encounter with the police at all previously and they kind of left you alone or was this even the first time they've uh, even spoken to you? Uh, no, they had come before and a lot of them actually, surprisingly in New York and in Long Island, they were really supportive of us and gave thumbs up. And on one occasion, a in uniform police officer came up with Snicker bars and Coca-Cola bottles for uh, to show his um, – respect for us and how he agreed. So that was pretty exciting, and we didn't expect that. And so you guys were uh, protesting in favor of impeachment for Barack Obama, is that right? Yes, in a very, very liberal state. Right, and so, and it was funny too because there's actually video, and I'll I'll post the link to the video on our Facebook and Twitter for those uh, who are unfamiliar with this. There's video of you interacting with this cop who's threatening you just before he arrests you. And you yeah. actually told him, hey, you know, one of your colleagues actually gave me this, you know, food and these, mm-hmm, these yeah. drinks. And the dude did not believe you. And you, you even offered to show him video footage of one of his colleagues giving you free stuff. And obviously he didn't want to see that. So exactly. that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, we had uh, other people on the overpass when that happened. So it's definitely definitely did happen. And I'm not telling lies here. It's very truthful. And I have other people to account to it. Um, but. We fought in court for six months, six long months, and we were finally exonerated and dismissed in court really? by a local judge here. Now, I, I, I guess I misunderstood that detail of the story. I thought that they dismissed it before you went to court. So there was actually court hearings about this? You had, you yes. had an attorney? Yes, I had a higher private uh, constitutional attorney who's a great guy. His name was Thomas F. And And um, we were in court twice a month for six wow. months. And so what was the, the reason finally that the court gave for kicking the case out? Um, we filed many motions. We um, uh, had a fair and speedy trial motion because it was going so long. Um, on the defense, on the pr- prosecution's case, they were really um, unprepared every time we went to court, very behind on their work, and we mm-hmm. really jumped on them. And uh, the judge ruled in our favor for an order uh, for dismissal, and she noted that it was because it was a constitutional base and that I had every right to do it. And she completely dismissed the case on a constitutional basis. So, And, and you were charged with what was it? Disorderly conduct and what else? Criminal nuisance. Disorderly conduct is a violation in New York, but criminal nuisance is a class B misdemeanor. So you were facing uh, some fines, I would imagine, for that. that right? uh, fines, but I could be facing jail time. Yes. If you didn't pay the fines, it put you in jail for sure. Sure. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a clean record, so I couldn't see why they would jail me for something stupid like that, but they very well could have. Yeah, well, I mean, this was obviously your first—if it was a clean record, this was obviously your first arrest. Um, yes, but how, I, I was still in the local um, local jail for six hours. How? Uh, yeah, how, what was the process like uh, as far as getting arrested? I mean, obviously, you, you, know, you see it on TV, you see it in the movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it like for you? Uh, they— they maybe turn off my phone or turn off my phone and they put me in handcuffs behind my back. And even though I have a, a shoulder dislocation problem and I asked them if I could have the handcuffs placed in the front just to avoid any possible dislocations, they, they said that we couldn't do that. So I rode the whole way with my shoulder almost nearly at the oh, brink man. Oh, in the cruiser back to the precinct. Then we got back to the precinct. We went up the stairs. Oh, oh before they even get you the precinct, of course, they pat you down and they go in your pockets, you know, mm-hmm. even though you don't consent to it. And uh, we get to the precinct, and they put me in a big little cage. <laughs> were you in with there. other people, or were you— Yes, I was in with another person, yes. So uh, was there anything eye-opening about that, or was it kind of everything you expected it to be? Um, I, the <laughs> eye-opening part about it was that it was happening when I thought that what I was doing was completely legal, which oh, yeah, it is. yeah, you thought you had yeah. Uh, rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we <laughs> thought, thought I we thought I did. And, you, um, you even thought that guy swore an well, oath to the Constitution. you do have yeah. rights, but— 
the your mistake was thinking that they would respect them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was Surprise. fooled, I guess. You don't need no rights. Well, and you asked the classic question that I, th- I always found a fun uh, question to ask the cops is, well, didn't you swear an oath to the Constitution? And the guy's answer was like, oh, I've sworn a lot of things. I mean, he yeah. just kind of blew it off like it meant nothing to him. Yeah, and uh, then he compared my uh, my protest to drunk driving. Oh, yeah, 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 right. So you guys are on an overpass in New York, uh, so there's certainly plenty of traffic going by, and he was essentially claiming that you putting signs on the overpass, now, mind you, there are billboards and government signs everywhere, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. your signs were They're going offensive. to cause an accident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely, that's exactly what they were saying. And uh, the funny thing about it, the woman that was prosecuting us, she was the district attorney at the time, Kathleen Rice, but she was running for Congress. And I don't know if they do it in your area, in New Hampshire, but in Long Island, they post political campaign signs, little little billboards, onto the overpasses and the pedestrian overpasses. So she was doing it, and I was being prosecuted <laughs> for something that she was doing as well. So wow. that was a big thing we pushed into the, the courts, and they really saw that that was um that was That's truthful. funny. So prosecutors are actually elected there, huh? Yes, they're okay. elected. Gotcha. So now you're suing. You've brought a civil case into federal court about this because you know they violated your rights. Correct, correct. And I, I spent a lot of money on a lawyer. It was very expensive. So we're trying to get what I spent back, and we want to change textbooks. That's overall what we want to do. We want to make sure that no one has to go through what I went went through, and they can read about it in school. So now, just to be clear, you're doing a fundraiser over at, uh, and I don't know how you got this URL, but it's pretty good, gofundme.com slash protest. Yes. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good URL. Right, perfect one, right? Uh, mm. So at gofundme.com slash protest, you're only trying to raise $3,000. Does that pay for the first case, or is that paying for the federal civil case? No, I already paid out of pocket for the criminal case. So this is just for the federal civil case. And that money goes to fees that I had to do just to file in federal court, seven pages. Oh, my one-sided. God. Because I was going to say $3,000 sounds really cheap for uh, hiring an attorney. So uh, do you have an attorney who's working pro bono or on contingency or something? On, he's on contingency. Okay. So if he wins, then he's going to sue. He's going to uh, demand attorney's fees from. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Got it. And um, so this is just to get the transcripts. This is to yeah. file the paperwork. I mean, this this is I mean, Rich Paul, you know what this is all about. You filed an appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. And, mm. you know, there were a lot of there was a, you had a long trial. So the longer the trial is, the yeah. you know, the more the transcripts cost. It's insane. Yeah. Now, now, the difference is that my case was actually a criminal appeal and his case is an original case right. in civil court. So it's not quite the same thing. But there are uh, all these Im- administrative costs that they just throw on yeah. you. There are administrative on. costs. In a civil case, uh, if you win, you may well be able to get some or all of those costs covered this is true. by the other side. In a criminal case, uh, if they charge you uh, even with no basis, then you're still out the money. More with Denny oh, Martins. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Honestly, we canceled an appointment to have Jake euthanized to give Dynavite a chance to save this dog's life. Jake is an eight year old male Akita. His entire stomach and groin area, his face, his elbows, his ears, every orifice was just riddled with yeast and sores. We had a vet treat him, and Jake didn't respond at all. My son heard the commercial for Dynavite. D I N O V I T E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within four days, Jake started to heal. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The yeast is receding, and now his belly is completely cleared up. It chokes me up. It brings tears to my eyes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before, 
Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. The Surgeon General warns teens the cinnamon challenge is not for pussies. Taylor Swift is now dating the Watertown boat, and a middle-aged funeral director buys a flashy red hearse. We pity your pathetic dependence on this for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. This is the Onion Week in Review. A study released this week by the National Institutes of Health confirmed that for the 25th straight year, wolf attacks remain the leading cause of death in the United States. The Human Health Agency's findings confirmed that being viciously killed by a ravenous wolf claimed the lives of over 800 thousand Americans last year alone, with researchers adding that one person in the United States dies every 40 seconds from a violent wolf attack. The mortality rate associated with wolf attacks vastly outstrips the death tolls of cancer, stroke, and chronic respiratory disease. People should know that anyone... Oh, Jesus. No. <laughs> is the Onion News Network. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, a man wipes his butt cheeks with a police summons and we'll tell you what happened after that danica has that story Uh, it's ian danica and rich paul in the studio with you here tonight you can also join us via skype that's where danny martins is telling us about his arrest for uh, engaging in protest classic free speech supposedly protected acts uh but our skype username if you want to join us is lrn.fm so just send a contact request over to that and we will get you approved shortly thereafter, and it'll be, you'll be good to go uh, to call from that point forward. And if you care about privacy when you're on the Internet, you need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network, and they'll encrypt your online data before it gets to your Internet service provider. ProXPN does it right, offering OpenVPN, which is the gold standard of network encryption. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and even Linux support. So whatever operating system you're on, they can help protect you. And you can get them at 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and 50 as in 50% off. But if that's not good enough, if you want an even deeper discount, then pay with Bitcoin through ProXPN.com slash AMP. That's ProXPN.com slash AMP, like Advertise, Market, and Promote, like our AMP program. So the deal is you pay less than $50 worth of Bitcoin, and $5 of your purchase goes to benefit the Free Talk Live AMP program, which is pretty awesome. But the less than $50 worth of Bitcoin actually buys you two years of pro xpn it's a huge savings but it's only good if you pay with bitcoin so go to proxpn.com slash amp and take advantage of that new offer or if you must use a credit card you can use code ftl50 and get that 50 percent off deal let's go back to danny in new york he's on skype with us here danny you were arrested on an overpass uh, a couple of years ago or a year or so ago mm-hmm. 
uh, for engaging in protest, classic protected First Amendment activity, but that doesn't ever stop the police from harassing people. And you'd done it for many, many, many weeks, even in, you know, like an entire year uh, mm-hmm. going out and, and protesting at the same location. And this was the first time that you'd really ever been messed with uh, by the cops and they this cop arrested you. Uh, you were charged with disorderly conduct and something else, and then you ended up getting those charges dismissed after spending who knows how much money hiring a, a private attorney uh, mm-hmm. to defend you. You're now suing in uh, civil court in, at the federal level. And yeah. so what's the status with the with the case? Have you filed yet, or you're still raising money to, to jump through the hoops to file? We already filed to file seven pages in federal court. One-sided was $400, and that's a, a rate— that's a rate that President Obama changed to, so we had to pay four hundred dollars to file. What was um, it before it was changed to four hundred? I think it was like in the two fifty range, somewhere okay. around there. Um, so we already filed the police officers, the county, and whoever else that we have um, on the plaintiff side. I mean, in the uh, defense side, is uh, served their papers, and now we have a discovery phase hearing on December second. Do you think they're going to settle? They. They probably are because we get a lot of press. We were in the Washington Times. We were in the New York Post. We were all across the nation when I went into court for my first hearing, for my dismissal. And when we filed in federal court, we keep getting stories in New York Post and the Washington Times. So we did get a lot of media headlines from this story. So they might want to settle quick because it could be a really risque court uh, decision. Sure, yeah. So. We, we're not looking at that. We really want to get this to change textbooks and stuff like that. And we do need the donations to keep the court phase going on because it does cost money. And especially if we plan on um, deposing all these officers, that costs a lot of money. And it's per page. So, you, Rich, do you have a question for Danny? Uh, yeah. What, if anything, happened to the cop who obviously violated your rights? This is, would actually be his second time. He got in trouble for a civil rights issue. I believe the first time he was sent to court on a civil issue because he arrested someone, just dragged someone out of their house and arrested them, and they did the same process as I did. So if I get a conviction or a ruling on this, this would be his second strike, and we are encouraging that he be removed because this is not the first time. This is the second time, and he just seems like that kind of officer. And if you've seen the video, he's very aggressive, definitely very aggressive and uh, loudmouth. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I, like I said, I will post the video on our Facebook and Twitter along with the link to your fundraiser. I mean, three the $3,000 is a reachable goal, uh, I would say. And uh, and kudos to your attorney for being willing to take this on, on on contingency. It's nice to see attorneys willing to step up and, you know, not not nail somebody to the wall with uh, with attorney's fees right, right out the gate. Yeah, he's really great. I really appreciate it him having me and taking on my case because it is a risque case and it's a case that's going to reflect on him as well do you have the uh cop's name and phone number <laughs> i do have the cop's name i'm going to look real quick for the second precinct phone number for okay. the Nassau well County. what i was going to ask you to do is email it to me so let's not take up on air to air time <laughs> for it but i would okay. love to give him a call and tell him what i think of him and uh if somebody else can record it if somebody else records it, I don't think I can be prosecuted for that. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what email address should he email yeah. you, Rich, if yeah. that's what you want? Oh, uh, or I could give it to him off the air if you'd prefer that. That would be better. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Danny, keep us in the loop. Let us know how this develops. But let's rewind a little bit. I mean, just to just to hold your feet to the fire a bit here. Why a uh, protest to impeach Obama? I mean, it, isn't it true that if Obama were impeached, that there'd just be some other scumbag uh, who takes his place, namely Joe Biden, or you know, even if you manage to impeach them both, which of course is re- you know not really likely to happen, uh, that you know some other scumbag is going to come into the into the place. So, isn't it kind of futile? Yeah, it definitely is a futile subject, and we always promote that there should be uh, term limits across the board, but unfortunately that's not what it is. But I do think Obama should have been impeached because of his NSA spying and him and Hillary Lee's lack of thereof or any fight in Benghazi. So, Would, would you have supported impeachment of, of uh, W? Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Groovy. Yeah. Okay. It's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Me too. Good on both sta- Yeah. On both libertarian guys. here. Libertarian. All right. Here, right on. So why are you still in New York if you're a libertarian? <laughs> oh, I, I. You know, even though <laughs> you know I'm the most liberal state ever, I still love. I love. I love New York City, and I love 
where I live. Uh, the Empire oh. State. Uh, yeah. Give definitely. them time. They'll do mm-hmm. still. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they'll do something to piss you off. Hey, yeah. thanks for the call tonight, Danny. I appreciate your story. It's his website, by the way. The the uh, the, the GoFundMe is GoFundMe.com slash protest. Uh, and thanks for the call. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, good luck. Good luck to him. And, uh, and good luck to all of you in New York, you poor bastards. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, if you want to actually have a chance at freedom, that's not the place to do it. I'm sorry, but it's it's just not. I mean, the the, uh, the Bitcoin world in New York is suffering big time uh, over the last few months because of the, the new bit license that has come out there. Uh, the, basically, they're threatening bitcoin exchanges and telling them if you don't get our bit license we're gonna hurt you uh and here's what it takes to get the bit license you have to jump through all these hoops which will cost you approximately a hundred thousand dollars so that pretty much cuts everybody out of the market except for the richest of the rich now would this apply to just a guy standing on the street trading bitcoin for cash uh, if they caught you being a Bitcoin marketplace, I don't know if they, you know, I don't know how loosely they will define Bitcoin market. Mm-hmm. So I can't tell you for sure. If you are accepting Bitcoin for your business, for products, the the new Bitcoin license or bit license doesn't affect that. So you could still like run a retail store and accept Bitcoin. Uh, but if you're doing an exchange, then that would put you under super scrutiny in New York. And, of course, that's just one of the myriad of ways that they are extracting wealth and obedience in New York State. If you're a liberty lover in New York or anywhere else, definitely check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. This is Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm Rick Osick with Famous Footwear. Did you know that premature birth is the number one killer of babies? That's why we support the March of Dimes in the fight against premature birth. Join us in supporting cutting-edge research, treatment programs, and outreach to help moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Learn how you can help save babies' lives at marchofdimes.org. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It is Free Talk Live. You may join us here. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out to us that way if you have that as an option. I tend to prefer it because it usually sounds really great. Uh, joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Rich Paul. Uh, so also, I want to let you know about uh, how to save big time at Amazon, how about 20% off on average? That is the average U.S. House, uh, household and, uh, you know, the average U.S. savings at saveitpurse.com. That's how you do it. You go to saveitpurse.com. You actually select the discount that you want. So if you want to save more than 20%, you can do that. You can save 30% pretty easily. 40%, you're going to take a little while longer. The higher the percentage you want uh, off, the longer you have to be willing to wait for someone to fulfill your order uh, for you. Now, it's pretty easy to understand how this works, but you do need to pay with Bitcoin. So get started. Learn more by going to saveitpurse.com. That's saveatpurse.com. Saveitpurse.com. And uh, you can, even if you don't have Bitcoin yet, you can get started right now by just signing up for your account. And then you can load it with Bitcoin when you're ready. Uh, recently, I have saved as much as 40% off over at saveatpurse.com. Uh Yes, uh, Rich Paul, you had a question about Purse. Uh, yeah, I, I heard rumors of their shutdown, but it was just rumors. I didn't really see anything concrete. Can you can you fill any, anything in on that? Yes, actually, there there was some news uh, over the last several, it was like probably a few days ago now, maybe several days ago uh, about this. And we actually reached out to Andrew Lee, who is the CEO of Purse. He was the person who actually came to us initially and said hey I, i'm a listener i love what you guys are doing and you know want to get behind the show if i can which is super cool right i mean to, mm -hmm. to have him listening uh, but here's what actually happened there again there were a lot of news headlines about purse you know there's people lost money okay well here's what happened on saturday uh our third party email service provider was compromised and the attacker sent out unauthorized emails they uh i imagine those were phishing emails they discovered and thwarted the attempt in less than an hour. All told, 11 users, which is 0.02% of their, less than 0.02% of their total user base, uh, were affected. And those users have been reimbursed. So whoever it was that, that did lose money for a moment uh, through this, this hack, essentially... Uh, they were reimbursed by purse. Well, that's so good, at least. That increases good. their public, their yep. uh, credibility in my book. Oh, yep. yeah, for sure. Uh, a little more detail. 10.235 Bitcoin were withdrawn from the 11 users. Uh, Purse's servers themselves were not compromised. 2.3 so, Bitcoin? No, no, 10.235, so over 10 Bitcoin. 10.23, okay. So, so you're still looking worth. about $2,500. Yeah. Uh, and so Purse just made good on that. Uh, their servers weren't compromised. Purse itself was not hacked. They did, from what I understand, close down for a short time, I'm sure, to do a security audit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, reports of accounts with two-factor being compromised are not accurate, they say. So that's, you know, there's, you know, in the marketplace, there are competitors who might say something about you that might not be true. And right. if you've got two-factor uh, on, and for the listeners that don't know, two-factor 
is an extra layer of security on an account. So the traditional way of getting into an account on the Internet is to have a password. And on most sites, you type in your password and your username and you're in the account. And you can change anything you want to uh, about the account from there. With sites like purse, uh, saveitpurse.com, uh, with other banking kind of sites or Bitcoin-related sites where there's more money involved, or even I think Google now offers two-factor, as a matter of fact. But So more sites are offering this two-factor. And what the second factor is, it can be different things. There's uh, there's authenticators, and I don't want to get into how those work because I don't really understand it myself <laughs> at this point. Mm -hmm. But the one that I do understand is the phone code. So some sites that have two-factor authentication will offer to send you a text message. So when you log in with your correct password, they then say, oh, well, hello, Rich. Just to make sure that it's actually you, check your, uh, your phone for a text message from us and then type in the code that we sent you in the text message. So that means that the person who's trying to get into your account, which hopefully is you, uh, will have to jump through two uh, factors of account security in order to actually access the account. So two-factor is available at purse, but they don't force people to use it. So it's up to you uh, to turn that on if you want it. So that's what they're saying here is that of the people who were compromised, none of the people who were compromised had two-factor. Oh. Groovy. Yeah. So, okay. So, well, let me give you one piece of free technical advice. Sure. I, I used to be in computer security business. If you're in a security-intensive business, please don't outsource your email. Mm. Frequently, people will send passwords over emails, and they, they will send things over email, especially within the company from one employee to another, that may well compromise your system. So if you keep your email server in-house, you're a lot safer from that kind of attack. That's a good point. Um, hopefully he's listening tonight. Our toll-free <laughs> number, if you want to join us, is 855-450-FREE. So Purse is alive and well. You can go to saveitpurse.com right now and get started. And when you enter through that link, Free Talk Live, uh, we'll get a very, very small portion of any future purchases that you make. So, uh, Danica, tell me about this guy who wiped his butt <laughs> with some kind of summons from the police. It's not the first time there's been a story like this. Is this actually fresh news or is it like an old story? Because sometimes sometimes when you're on Facebook, someone will post an old story from sure, you know, yeah, 2012 yeah, yeah. and none of us in the studio will notice it and then we'll notice it as soon as we start talking. This was it. published on October 13th so of this, this year. So this is fresh. However, right. it seems to, and um, when I talk about the story, I'll go more into the dates about that, but it seems like that there's maybe a slight hang up about when it actually happened. Um, a 45-year-old man has been charged with taking a police summons, placing it between what the indictment calls his butt cheeks, <laughs> wiping the paper up and down, and then tossing it at a police officer. <laughs> Justin uh, Greenwood of the White that's House. Where he made that's the mistake. one I haven't tried. I know, that's, right? that's where he made the mistake, was tossing it at the police officer. I suspect had he simply wiped it and then held on to it. Uh, that right, on the... Not... On the you know, the better part <laughs> mm. yeah. probably wouldn't have been so bad. Or if he but... just shook it at him, maybe he yeah. wouldn't have gotten arrested. I don't of know. course, we all know how police uh, write up police reports. So they if the lie. indictment says he threw it at the cop, it may just mean he threw it on the ground. Yeah, that's true. And it landed, you know, closer to the cop than his feet were. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't say what he was originally summoned for. I mean, I guess he could have been, he probably was summoned for a very unrelated thing and just was like, no. No, I'm not going taking the summons. Here. You don't think he got summoned for wiping his butt with something else? Well, no, he was served with summons and then used it to wipe this his butt. This could just be a mad wiper. No, you could, know, he it, may be doing this with all kinds of documents all I don't over know, the state. If I wiped my butt with the summons, I'd be pretty grumpy too. Maybe but. he just was a big Demolition Man fan. Have you guys ever seen that movie? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I, did I love that movie, that but I don't remember movie. that. You know, oh, wow. You should check it out again. Uh, how long has it been since you've seen it, Rich? Um, Pretty recent. Pretty recently, and, uh, you know, I've definitely had, uh, you know, there are a lot of things I remember from it. I loved the overall message of, you know, the soft, g supposedly gentle police state and what's hiding under the surface of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was one of the best movies from the 1990s, in my opinion, just because it was so much fun. It was a great action movie. But anyway, the scene uh, that I'm referring to is in the movie, they've, 
Uh, it takes place in the future from the 1990s, so the future is like I don't know, I don't now. know what year it is. It's probably now. I think uh, it's like 20. No, it's actually dozens or of something. years. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's a few dozen years actually in in the future yeah. from the mid 90s. It's not. I can tell you it, from watching it recently, it's not too far from where we are right now. And so, uh, John Spartan is the main character. That's the not the actor's name. The actor would be Sylvester Stallone. And he gets out of this cryogenic freeze, and as soon as he lets out a curse word, there's some machine on the wall. <laughs> that issues a ticket. Yeah, that like, says, John Spartan, you have been issued a ticket in violation of the uh, Clean Language Act, or whatever it's called. <laughs> and then it spits out this ticket. So at one point, he's trying to figure out how to and use And he's the- cursing at it for ticket- he's cursing ticketing him, so it just keeps so it's just- ticketing at yeah. it. Right. And so what he does at one point is he's trying to figure out how to use the new toilet system, <laughs> and he can't figure it out, so he just goes and curses over and over again and gets all these paper slips and uses it to wipe. Oh butt. wow! Yeah, it's I fun didn't. Stuff. It's a great I didn't movie. even catch that whole sequence. Check I remember he couldn't remember how he couldn't figure out how to use the seashells. Eight fifty five, four fifty <laughs> free. That's right. The three seashells. It's free talk live. <laughs> the new fourth edition of Healing Our World: The Compassion of Libertarianism will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over thirteen hundred updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a five dollar discount. When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor. Her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair, a thinking person's historical fantasy novel. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. My dad was 59 when he collapsed from a heart attack late last year. Just this past August was when we spread his ashes on the St. Croix River. I loved my dad, but boy was he stubborn. He hadn't been to the doctor in over 25 years. His excuse? He simply couldn't afford it. He wasn't a rich man by any means. At less than $107 per month, libertyoncall.org would have been the perfect alternative for my father. Don't wait. Go to libertyoncall.org right now for not just your sake, but for the sake of your loved ones. Again, that's libertyoncall.org. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. 
If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We will allow you to call in and talk about anything you want to discuss. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And coming up in two weeks from today, Keenvention is going to be happening. The three of us will be attending, although, uh, Danica, you're going to be, unfortunately, unable to attend some of Keenvention due to the fact that you're going to be working in a kitchen. Yeah, that's uh, true. <laughs> for, for part of the time. You uh, provide the VIP meals, which is a, a nice touch to Keenvention. It's a place that those who have spent the extra cash on the VIP ticket or are our guest speakers uh, get to go and, and enjoy a, a home cooked meal by you, Danica. And it was by me. It was good. Uh, it was very good last year. It uh, got a lot of nice comp- compliments from the, the people who attended it. So good. We're doing it again uh, this year, and it'll be uh, happening at the Keen Activist Center. So that is uh, one of the things that'll happen if you're at Keenvention is you could attend a VIP dinner. And there's also all kinds of other things happening from. Uh, Let's see, 44 speakers we're going to be having at Keenvention. Wow. Uh, so we have 11 panels, 44 speakers. Uh, we're gonna, and that includes our three keynote addresses. Uh, we're we're going to have the illegal Uber driver. He's our newest uh, keynote speaker that we've announced, and I'm super excited about him. I think that it's nice to see civil disobedience come back here in New Hampshire. It's sort of civil disobedience, for those of you don't, that don't know, uh, New Hampshire is the destination for the Free State Project which we mentioned earlier in the hour, the idea being libertarians, voluntarists, anarchists, people who love liberty. They're coming to New Hampshire. They're getting active. And civil disobedience is something that has happened off and on here over the the last decade. And it's nice to see it come back, especially on an issue that has such significance nationwide. I mean, certainly, Rich, you uh, you kind of led the way in a lot of ways with some of this earlier civil disobedience here in New Hampshire with the 420 uh, celebrations that, that went on. Ah, uh, yep. And that's a that's an important issue nationwide as well. Uh, obviously, we've we've actually seen some movement in some of the states like Colorado and Washington, and we've actually seen legalization there. I think Alaska just recently voted that in, and even Oregon, I believe, all of the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think those are the four that that it's currently legal for recreational purposes. And so it's nice to see this issue where Uber is also. Uh, under attack in a lot of places, not just in the U.S., but internationally. This this issue is, you know, they've, they've raided the offices of Uber in France, and, and I think it was either Hong Kong or Seoul. Uh, so this this Uber company is really on the front lines of freedom, uh, at least as far as uh, as far as the freedom to do business mm-hmm. with people, the, the freedom to give someone a ride to another place. I mean, it's, this is a basic freedom, the freedom to travel. Yeah. Uh, and they seem to have some willingness to fight, which is unusual. Oh, yeah. Most corporations won't defend themselves. They'll just slink off if any government tells them to. And these guys apparently are still providing the web component of service to Portsmouth, which is necessary for the driver to continue driving in Portsmouth. They have to be taking orders in Portsmouth. So it's nice that they have not caved to the city and they're uh, apparently standing with their driver. Yeah. And it's actually turned into more than one driver, as a matter of fact. Uh, there, it's, So it was just Christopher David, who's the guy that's going to be speaking at Keenvention. But he said in his recent posts on Facebook that there are still multiple uh, Uber drivers now in, in the Portsmouth area in New Hampshire that are operating uh, illegally, because uh, Portsmouth banned Uber this summer, essentially. They essentially mm-hmm. regulated Uber uh, and made it illegal for them to operate without jumping through some arbitrary government hoops, and mm-hmm. Uber's not willing to do uh, what they're demanding. Now, that's not to say that Uber doesn't have standards. They require that their drivers be insured. Mm-hmm. They require proof of insurance uh, from their drivers, and they do conduct a background check. So... The requirements that Portsmouth was putting on Uber involve a background check 
and they involve uh you know they involve the person's uh, licensed and insured you know mm-hmm. they can drive on the road but uber refuses to go through the background check process in portsmouth and i suspect that's because the portsmouth background check is more extreme than what uber thinks is necessary to run their business mm. now mm. well that and it, requ- it it's problematical for your business model if for every driver you hire, you have to give him a different set of instructions as to which hoops he has to jump through based on yeah, what based on city location. he's in. That means that they have to have lawyers in all 50 states and maybe in most of the major cities where they intend to do do business just to keep track of what that city's laws are. Right, and that's a huge cost. Now, these guys mm. are obviously paying a lot of money in attorney's fees because they have so many open cases Uber does all mm. around the globe. So who knows what their legal budget is, but I imagine it's it's you know lots of millions of dollars would be my guess. And it's mm. amazing that they can still, even with the, the legal fees they're paying, still actually run this company and keep it profitable and and pay their, uh, pay their drivers. But they do. I mean, Uber's... Uh, the guy that uh, Christopher David, who's the illegal Uber driver in Portsmouth, one of the customers he picked up that he got recording of, this customer was ranting against the taxi cabs. He hates the taxi cabs in uh, in Portsmouth. He says that the taxi cabs don't even operate past like midnight, so oh, wow. they, they won't even go to when the bars let out. So if you you know you get out of the bar at 1 a.m. and uh, there's no taxis there's no around, cab. what are you gonna do? That's putting your customers, you know, it's putting people in danger by not having Uber on the roads at that wow. time. So there's all kinds of arguments why this this should happen. But the what I love about uh, Christopher David is he's not just begging the politicians for permission to do business. He's going out there and picking up uh, fares and taking them places, taking them mm-hmm. to where they want to go. And it's all a completely consensual process that both parties agree to. He gets ratings with Uber. You get rated. You know when you're the when the ride's over, like an, like an eBay search, kind of like what Airbnb five does. Five stars, yep. Right, uh, your your customer, you it's the driver can rate the customer, and the customer can rate you the driver. And mm-hmm. he's got like a four point eight five, which puts him in the top ten percent of all the drivers in in Boston in the Boston area. Nice. Well, nice. Uh, so clearly, you know, he's satisfying his customers. And I mean, really, you would never want to do business with someone on that level who wasn't any less than that. You know what? I- it's yeah, kind of like with the eBay. Top 10%, like sure. you wouldn't want to buy something from someone on eBay if they were less than say ninety seven percent. I want to say yeah. uh, so that that differential is great. I mean, obviously, no one you know hardly mm-hmm. anyone can probably be a perfect five, but you wouldn't probably wouldn't want to get into the car of someone who is a well, a right? Because you're going to encounter like, a bad customer every now and then. Who's sure, yeah. Leave a bad review. Can the rates be adjusted with you with Uber? Is there are the rates flat or do they depend on the driver? That's actually an interesting question. Uber um, charges a certain rate per market, so it's different per market based on market factors. But mm-hmm. also, they will charge higher rates based on demand. So if uh, let's say there's a, mm. you know some sporting event or whatever, and there's a concentration of activity in a specific neighborhood. Uh, and they they you know they narrow it down to the the areas where the the activity is happening. So if there's a concentration of people who need rides, they'll have what's called surge pricing, and mm-hmm. it could be twice as much, three times as right, much as yeah. their regular rates. So when you are a client with Uber, you'll be you'll go into the app and they'll warn you. They'll say, Hey, look, you know you're going to pay three times as much for this yeah, ride. Yeah, fares are three x mm-hmm. high because right. so of a certain you can time post- period. Po- if Sorry. you can postpone it for three hours, go ahead and do and save yourself some money. That makes that well, for a Sometimes you just you want yeah. a ride to get out of there. I mean, I remember when I was in New York and there w- was that big uh, protest going around with, uh, goodness. The, the, yeah, you kind of got caught up in it, right? Yeah. Um, M- Eric, was it? I cannot remember his Eric last name. Garner. Eric Garner, thank you. I was thinking. The I was, guy that got choked to death. Yeah, yeah the, I the can't guy that breathe. got choked to death. Eric. Um, when I was in New York, all of a sudden there was a bunch of protests on these streets, and I hadn't, I couldn't get out of there. And so when I looked at Uber, it said that the rates were going up three times because people were trying Ooh. to get home, and there was literally no way for anyone to get home. 
Yeah, it's a brilliant system. I mean, I actually went through the sign-up process to see what it was like to become an Uber driver and kind of learn it, uh, learn that side of the the business. And it's it's cool because it actually incentivizes the drivers to get on the road. Right. So if you're an Uber mm. driver, you would you could know where these hot zones are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the company makes more money, but the driver also that's makes correct. more money. The driver nice. makes eighty percent of whatever the fare is. Oh, that's very yeah. nice. Yes. That's my understanding of it, at least. See, uh, then the other thing that I would add for that, if it was me, was an ability to say, I'll bid less for a lower-rated driver. And that ooh. would give lower-rated drivers an opportunity to, to uh, exactly, to, to redeem themselves by providing uh, good service to a group of care customers where maybe the standards aren't as high, but they're saving more money. So, you know, it's the interesting. people. I, I hadn't really <laughs> intended to talk about uh, Uber, but we were discussing Keenvention. Keenvention's happening the 30th through the 1st, so it's coming up in two weeks. It's a Friday through a Sunday. You'll get to meet Christopher David and 43 other great Liberty activists from uh, from up here. So go to Keenvention.info. There's all kinds of cool stuff that are, that is going to be happening there. Keenvention.info is where you can get your tickets for 60 bucks for the entire weekend. And there's actually interesting news about Uber. We'll share that with you on Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one multi-language solution for over 25 years and satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at savetimehosting.com. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. SWCPoker.eu is Bitcoin Poker 2.0, where players can buy chips, play, and cash out anonymously with Bitcoin. No banking, just Bitcoin. Texas Hold'em, Omaha Hold'em, Draw, and many new games, including Chinese Poker. SWC Poker gladly accepts players worldwide, and over 2 million hands of Bitcoin Poker have been dealt at SWCPoker.eu. Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust. SWCPoker.eu. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 16th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.06 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $262. Antiwar.com reports the White House made clear on Wednesday that they oppose any independent investigation of the recent U.S. attack on a Doctors Without Borders hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan, and the Pentagon seems to be doubling down, ensuring that there's not much evidence left for an independent investigator when they get there. Doctors Without Borders on Thursday reported that they were informed that the U.S. smashed into the wreckage of the hospital with a tank, forcing their way in and destroying potential evidence that would be used in a war crimes investigation. 
investigation. U.S. officials claimed that the tank was carrying investigators from the official military inquiry into the matter, though they likely could have gotten into the hospital closed after the attack without using a tank if they had simply asked Doctors Without Borders to let them in. The latest incident emerged amid reports that the Pentagon not only knew the facility was a protected hospital when they ordered it attacked, but that military analysts are continuing to argue that the attack was justified based on speculation a Pakistani spy may have been within the hospital. For over 35 years, Robertson Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Robertson Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports former House Speaker Dennis Hastert will plead guilty to accusations of paying $3.5 million to conceal prior sexual misconduct. U.S. District Judge Thomas Durkin on Thursday set Hastert's guilty plea for October 28th with a written plea agreement to be submitted to Durkin by Monday. An indictment released in May says Hastert paid an anonymous person identified as Individual A $3.5 million to silence illicit activities that Hastert engaged in when he was a high school teacher and wrestling coach between 1965 and 1981 in Yorkville, Illinois. The indictment does not explicitly state what Hastert did, rather federal law enforcement Enforcement officials told the Chicago Tribune that Hastert paid to hide the fact that he sexually abused a Yorkville High School student. In June, Hastert pled not guilty to refusing to report his monetary transactions and to feeding lies to the FBI. The current indictment also says he mapped out bank withdrawals in order to avoid raising red flags and lied about the transactions to the FBI. The withdrawals reportedly began in 2010 and were laid out in increments of $100,000 and $50,000. Hastert later decreased the withdrawal to less than 10000 each to allegedly avoid reporting the money. Both the FBI and the IRS were involved in the investigation beginning in 2013. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports California Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom on Thursday unveiled a ballot initiative aimed at strengthening the state's gun control laws by banning possession of large capacity magazines and requiring background checks for ammunition purchases. Newsom hopes to put the initiative before voters in the November 2016 election. Speaking in downtown San Francisco at the site of a shooting that killed eight people in 1993, Newsom said elements of the measure, some of which were unable to pass via the legislative process, would be strongly supported by California. California voters. The initiative would also require gun owners to report lost or stolen guns to law enforcement and improve data sharing between the state and federal government's criminal background check databases. It would also set up a process to relinquish guns from convicted felons who are already prohibited from possessing them. To be included on the 2016 ballot, Newsom and his backers would have to gather signatures from 366,000 registered voters who support putting the question on the ballot, a process that could cost $2 million or more more, and then raise funds to fend off a likely onslaught of opposition from gun rights advocates. In a statement, NRA spokeswoman Amy Hunter said Newsom's initiative was an attempt to chip away at the rights of gun owners and would do nothing to improve public safety. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Frustrated with his increased workload and a litany of interpersonal problems, CLG Software Project Manager William Garston brought a list of grievances Thursday to his supervisor Todd Watkins, an utterly powerless office functionary with no actual ability to resolve any problems. Oh, no, no, no. I'm really, I'm really glad that you're bringing this to me. This is great. The 15-minute interaction, which was taken seriously by both parties, involved Garston laying out a series of work-related issues he's had recently, absolutely none of which Watkins has even the slightest authority to address. Again, I'm sorry to be bothering you with all this stuff, Todd. I, I just, I've reached a point hey, where no, I was not under the... This is important. We're going to sort all this out.
Sources added that throughout the conversation, Watkins continually nodded his head and repeatedly assured Garston that his problems would be considered a top priority, despite the fact that he lacked the necessary clout to foster any change whatsoever within the company. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here. The toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Rich Paul. And uh, just a few moments ago, we were discussing Uber in relation to the the Uber driver, the heroic driver, in my opinion, who is... uh, who is continuing to drive in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and has uh, publicly pledged that he will continue to drive, and uh, illegally. So he's facing being pulled over by the police. He's facing a fine of $500, and that's the first time. I think it's $1,000 for the second time that he is caught. Thus far, they have yet to fine him, but he did have an interaction with the police about a week ago uh, where the officer uh, essentially threatened him and said, look, you know, if you pick somebody up, I'm, I can give you a summons. The officer moved along, and he picked up the passenger anyway, uh, despite having the bouncer of the club snitching on him uh, to the police. So the cops certainly know he's out there. There have been news media <laughs> stories in Portsmouth about him. Uh, so I imagine he is Uber driver wanted number one when it comes to the police. Mm. And... So uh, it's Ian and Danica and Rich Paul in the studio. You can join us here. Maybe you're an Uber driver and you want to comment, or maybe you're a cab driver and you're super angry and jealous because the cabbies— Uber angry, maybe? Uber angry. (laughs) The the cabbies in in Portsmouth are snitching now. They have become uh, become agents of the state. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's sick. It's well, it's really sad. That has always gone on with cab drivers against other cab companies. I mean, if really, you, yeah. If if a cab driver sees another cab driver from another country violating the law, especially if he's stealing a fare, which is illegal in some jurisdictions, mm. uh, then they will fare. call the. Uh, basically, you you get get a scanner. And they're dispatched over radios <laughs> similar to ours, and so you listen to the uh, dispatch channels of yeah. the other, and if you're closer than the driver they dispatch, up. you say, okay, I'll get that one. Right. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and especially, I imagine, they would also snitch uh, the cabbies. before but Pre-Uber days would also snitch on unlicensed uh, cabbies, so like the jitney cabs or gypsy cabs, as they're frequently called sure, in big yeah. cities who will go around and pick people up and take them places without having the medallions Mm -hmm. and without having the government papers. I imagine they got snitched on, too. Uh, Yeah, that can happen. And also people who do things like make unauthorized airport pickups because Ann Arbor cabs could drop off at the Detroit airport, but they couldn't pick up there. They had to go home empty. And if you're lucky, you might find somebody go into the Ann Arbor area and just say, yeah, I'll take you home on my way. But that was illegal if you did it. It didn't stop us. Yeah, so there's always been a lot of protectionism in the uh, the cabbie business. And now the cabbies are mad. A lot of them are, at least. Maybe maybe there's some cool, I'm sure there are some cool cabbies out there who are in their off time driving for Uber and Mm -hmm. and Lyft. In fact, I'm sure that that's, that's happening. Uh, but publicly, these cab companies are, uh, they're, you know, they're basically saying, yeah, we're going to snitch you out. And they claim that they've been writing down license plate numbers of the, the Uber cabs or the Uber drivers that they see around town. Mm-hmm. But now there's news about Uber sort of on a, a nationwide basis here and maybe even internationally. Uh, the story from businessinsider.com, the next time you order a burrito, it may be delivered by an Uber driver. Uh, as of Wednesday this week, Uber is graduating its Uber Rush pilot program from an experiment into a business. Launched in 2014, the Uber Rush trial let users hail a courier from the company's app, as you would do with a regular Uber ride, and track the approaching messenger. When Business Insider uh, tried the New York City pilot, a reporter had a raincoat she'd forgotten at a meeting picked up and dropped off within 20 minutes for $11. That was an extraneous and frivolous use. However, most people don't need bike messengers in their everyday life, forgotten raincoat, or keys aside. The real customer for Uber turned out to be businesses. 
The key difference between the new Uber Rush and a lot of its competitors like Postmates is that Uber Rush is designed to be your delivery driver, not an app where you place your order. When uh, users open the Uber app, selecting the Uber Rush button won't pull up a list of restaurants or stores that have guaranteed delivery within an hour. Uh, but their com competition, Postmates, on the other hand, displays its delivery partners, including Chipotle and McDonald's, and lets users pick from a menu of items in addition to letting merchants use it for their deliveries. The only Uber Rush function for customers using the Uber app will remain the same as the trial. You can request a personal courier for those moments when you need your raincoat delivered. The real business for Uber Rush will be in becoming the delivery fleet for small businesses across the city. If a restaurant is swamped with de delivery orders during the lunch hour, it can sign on to the Uber Rush merchant platform and summon a courier to its doorstep to deliver the orders for it. So if They'd probably want to do that beforehand so that they know that for sure they've got a delivery driver, wouldn't you think? Or do you think that there would be enough... Uber drivers, that would be a problem. In, in a big city, it probably wouldn't be a problem. Mm. I mean, uh, if you... It ever... seems like they'll always get one sooner or later. It's a question of how long will it be before they yeah, get Yeah, I would just only worry about the hotness of the food. But I suppose in the big city, there would probably be enough business to keep it going. And that's that's cool. Yeah, and this is only available in select cities at this point. Uh, so yeah. not every Uber, well, I don't know what you call them, affiliate. I mean, they're all corporate Uber, but not every uh, territory, if you will is going to have this, at least to start with. So I imagine there's probably a minimum, uh, I would imagine there's a minimum concentration of drivers in any given area that would be required in order for this program to launch. Sure, yeah. That way people can actually get the, the service. I mean, I remember when I was in Austin uh, and I tried out Uber for the first time, there was some guy around the block. So it wasn't far that the, the uh, driver had to travel in order to get to the pickup. And, uh, I mean, if that's the case, if you are Domino's Pizza or whatever, some mom-and-pop pizza shop or whatever, and your your driver's out on a, a drive and you've got another order that needs to go out, you can go on the app, you look at the, the status of where their drivers are. In a big city, It's probably there's probably a driver not more than two or three blocks away from you. So that's definitely going to result in hot food, especially if, you know, the food's cooking and you can call the driver up and, you know, hey, you need a pickup mm -hmm. in 10 minutes, right? Yeah. And of course, delivery food has temperature issues anyway. Even if even if it's a store driver right. bringing it, you know, it may well wait a while for that store driver. Sometimes everybody's out on a run. And, and you know, maybe this won't really work for restaurants. I mean, because it is going to be a little costly. We'll get into the prices here uh, in a moment. But it's a you know, it's a new idea, and I think mm -hmm. it's a it's going to be a valuable one in the marketplace. Obviously, Uber thinks so. And that's why they're rolling it out officially. So uh, so they could summon a courier to their doorstep to deliver their orders for it. The uh, small, If a small boutique wants to add same-day delivery for its clothing or books, they can add that as a delivery option against slower choices like the you know, UPS or the Postal Service. Where Uber becomes most efficient and most like FedEx or UPS is in its ability to pick up multiple packages from multiple businesses. Most customers won't know they've called a business that uses Uber Rush until after they've checked out and received the text message that says the delivery is on the way with the trackable link. Convenience does come at a cost, but Uber's decision to turn Uber Rush from an experiment into a real business suggests confidence in its model. Businesses won't have to pay Uber to sign up for the rush. Each Uber Rush delivery will cost the merchant 5 to $7. So that's going to be a, a hefty fee, you know, on top of uh, whatever the you've got a meatball sandwich all of a sudden your meatball sandwich has gone up from seven or eight bucks to fifteen dollars or whatever i mean i don't mm -hmm. know what these things cost it's probably there's probably a five dollar delivery fee if you're having mm -hmm. something delivered in new york city anyway sure yeah. be my and guess. of course if you're ordering for half a dozen people and paying six dollars extra for your order that's a dollar each that's a good point so yeah the more you order presumably would not necessarily increase the cost uh, too much. The Uber driver will get about 75 to 80 percent of the fee, and they will. Uh, and I guess Uber keeps the rest. It will be up to the merchants to decide uh, whether they want to pay the cost of deliveries out of pocket or add it into the total that the consumer pays. Uber gets its share either way. Uh, now, interesting thing. They say is 70 or 80 percent for Uber drivers. That's right. Uh, when I was driving a percentage lease on a taxi cab, it was a 50-50 lease. Okay. So I was getting a much smaller cut of the take but than the an cabbie, Uber driver would. The cab would. company would have been taking care of the car, right? Uh, yeah. So that would be a difference. I'm not sure yeah, which Uber, one you're... would end up being more profitable. Right. It would depend on how much business you did.
an Uber, you're responsible for the maintenance of your car as well as the mileage. So there's the difference. Our toll-free number for you if you want to join us here, 855-450-FREE. Your thoughts on Uber? You know, they're not a perfect company. There's some things to critique about them. uh, But they are really doing, I think, good work and important work in uh, moving the marketplace forward. It's Free Talk Live. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. Blake Dev- Development.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media? Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America. From where you shop, to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $2 higher at $1,184 per ounce. Silver is up $0.02 cents at $16.18 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $261. US Check out our Halloween special on Australian silver spiders. And if you've been looking for silver eagles, we've lowered that price too. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free to join us if you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features 
that are waiting for you there on the site. And uh, in addition to that, I want to let you know about the upcoming Bitcoin Investor Conference. It is just under two weeks from now. In fact, today or two weeks from today will be the final day of the Bitcoin Investor Conference. It's happening in Las Vegas at the D Hotel from Thursday, October 29th through Friday, October 30th. And our very own Mark Edge is going to be in attendance. He'll be broadcasting Free Talk Live live from the event. And you can be there. It's not too late to get your tickets. Uh, go to bitcoininvestor.com and you can go and get your tickets there. But we're actually giving away uh, some tickets on our Facebook page right now. Pinned to the top of the uh, page is a post where you can make a comment uh, with a guess of a number between 1 and 1,000. If you guess closest, then you will, and you can go to the conference, you'll get a free ticket to the Bitcoin Investor Conference at the D Hotel, which again is happening in two weeks. Only one guest per person is permitted, so make it count. And winners of this contest will be announced on Wednesday the 21st. So you get time to get in over at our Facebook page. Go to facebook.freetalklive.com. That's facebook.freetalklive.com. And again, don't miss the Bitcoin Investor Conference. It's going to be the first one ever. Lots of great speakers, of course, will be in attendance. And again, our very own Mark will be out there as well. It's Thursday, October 29th through Friday, October 30th in Las Vegas at the D Hotel, which they, by the way, uh, take Bitcoin at the D Hotel, which is super cool. So BitcoinInvestor.com uh, is the site as we continue here talking about Uber and the uh, the news that Uber is now uh, launching a delivery service. So, you know, they've got it down. They've got the system down as far as how you get one you know, a person from point A to point B, and, and they do it in an efficient manner. They do a great job of it, and that's why they've been the you know the rousing success that they've become. And so now it's just a simple matter of changing persons into products and adding products as an option, and that's what they're they've done here. Uh, BusinessInsider.com reporting on exactly how it's going to work. It's going to cost five to seven bucks. So if you're a merchant and you've got something that you want delivered, then you can use the Uber app, summon a driver. They'll come by, they'll pick up what you want delivered, and they'll take it to the destination. You pay five to seven bucks for that. And in a city, that's not an unreasonable thing to do. In a, in a place like New York City, it costs money to move things from Well, and you're probably going to want to pay for the convenience either because, let's face it, how many of us want to get off of our comfy couches and go pick up the food ourselves? Right. You know, sometimes we would just prefer to sit in our underwear and watch movies and then wait for the delivery driver to come get us. And if you're willing to it's pay worth it. five or seven dollars, then go for it. If not... Go get it yourself. I think that's, it's certainly, I mean, it, it, I mean, it is kind of a little, I mean, it's a good average convenience price, but it really makes you think, okay, do I want to save $7 and go get it myself, or am I okay paying the $7 and waiting for it? So it's just, it's not an unreasonable cost. Yeah, and if you're not, you know, and it does, it's no skin off Uber's back either way. In a right. city like Manhattan, there's going to be somebody else who needs the delivery if you don't. Sure, so. yeah. I think it could work out for them, and obviously they agree. Now, Postmates is its most direct competitor for on-demand delivery. i got to say, I've never heard of Postmates before. It's- I have not heard of that either. It wasn't What was the other, uh, wasn't there another delivery service? Uh, well, I there, can't there, I don't know if there have been a na- nationwide ones or anything like that, but I remember where I'm from in Florida, there was a company more than a decade ago that would go, and they. it was a local company. I don't think it was like yeah. a, a franchise or anything. Uh, but they they had deals with different restaurants, and they would offer these menus, which sounds like what this Postmates uh, company is doing. Yeah. So you'd go on their website or whatever, you'd call them up, and you'd say, okay, I want to get uh, this from the Olive Garden. And if it was one of the restaurants that was on their mm-hmm. deals, you know, they, they would go, and they'd pick it up for you, and they'd charge you extra for the delivery. So you'd pay the full Olive Garden price of 20 bucks or whatever it would be that your total would be there, add in the delivery fee on top of that, probably adding in a tip for the driver. I don't remember. I've never actually used their service. Right. Uh, but, you know, obviously you're going to pay a lot more for the product that way than otherwise, but you save the hassle of having to get out right, of the Right, you're house paying for the convenience. Exactly. So Postmates is the most direct competitor. They use a similar model, taking a cut of the total value of each sale. Postmates CEO says the company makes about 20% gross profit margins on each of its deliveries and is on track to be profitable in 2016. While the two companies may end up in a price war, they are ultimately approaching delivery from two angles. With Postmates, you order from Postmates. With Uber Rush, you just order from the business, and Uber handles the delivery in the background. 
Uh, Uber Rush's initial launch will be limited to three cities, Chicago, San Francisco, and New York. So basically the three biggest markets in the United States. In San Francisco, packages will be delivered via a mixture of bike couriers and cars. In Chicago, it's cars only, whereas New York deliveries will be on bicycle or on foot. And for now, pack, which kind of makes sense, you know, for New York, because that was the th- that was my sure. question was, you know, how the hell is somebody who's a delivery driver going to deliver anything in New York City? You can't park in New York City, generally. It's just not even an option. Uh, if you park in New York City, you you usually have to park, I mean, at least in uh, in Manhattan, right? Mm. Uh, you, yeah, have you seen how, like, cramped every, every car is on the side? Like, It's crazy. I would not be able to get any car out of that. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'd be scared to death to, uh, to do that kind of parallel parking. So you go in, you park in uh, one of these little parking lot things that they have that are underground, and then you pay through the nose to park there. Uh, I mean, even the minimum amount of time, you're going to be paying quite a, quite a bit just to park for a short period of time. If you park overnight, it's at least 50 bucks at one of these places. Sure, yeah. So, you know, that's not going to work. And obviously, they have so many laws in New York City about what they call standing or whatever, where, you know... the you Idling let, and stuff, yeah. Right, you just let the car sit. You can't do that. You can't get out of the car and run into the business, deliver the whatever it is, and then run back out to your Uber car. Nope, you're going to get a ticket. You're going to get towed. So it makes sense that in New York, Uber is only going to be doing this with bicyclists and people on foot. It's interesting. Hmm. So, Well, I'll tell not- you what, it would be a lot easier to get a bicycle and move to uh, New York than it would be to get a car and move to Portsmouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's certainly yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. Well, I wonder if they would allow pedicabs, too. Have you seen pedicabs? The, pedal- they- the pedaled cabs? Yeah, the pedal cabs. I wonder if they would extend that to that, too. But me- I suspect so. I mean, I, I imagine that qualifies as a bike under whatever Yeah, yeah, def- yeah. Whatever definitions. Those things are big in Austin. Oh, and I Grubhub was the delivery service that I was thinking about. Oh, that I, sounds familiar. Yeah, I had heard, um, I had heard about Grubhub, but it's in some areas, but not a lot. But Grubhub was, is one of the, like the internet things and it services. Doing the cities. same thing yeah. where you pick up from existing businesses. Right, yeah. Uh, so for now, passengers and packages will ride separately, and Uber Rush couriers will have special training to cover areas such as how long they should wait for deliveries or how long to best or how rather to best park their cars outside of a restaurant. Uber will have to fight for a large share of bike messengers and drivers alike, especially in the beginning when the two won't mix. If Uber can balance supply, demand, and efficiency at massive scale, then the real threat may be to big delivery giants like UPS and FedEx. If users start choosing a cheaper and faster same-day delivery option, one that allows you to track it as it's being delivered. You think about that, that's pretty cool. That's one of the cool factors about Uber is that you can actually watch the driver as they're coming to you. And so you know exactly when they're going to arrive. FedEx and and, uh, UPS don't offer that level of tracking, Mm -hmm. at least not yet. 855-450-FREE. That's our toll-free number here. You can join us on Free Talk Live. Asking permission every 10 minutes during sex, that apparently is becoming the rule in some places. We'll tell you more about it coming up. A revolution in body protection has arrived only at FortressSurvivalLLC.com. Introducing the revolutionary patented level 3 bulletproof vest. 100% Kevlar, 100% American made. Concealable, fully adjustable, and the lowest price on the market. Adult size normally $289.99, now just $250. Kid size normally $239.99, now just $200. Get affordable protection with a level 3A bulletproof vest from FortressSurvivalLLC.com. For thou art my rock in my fortress. Psalm 31.3. Uh, No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, 
Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozen more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen costume dance party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work dot I-T slash F-T-L. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You're invited here. If you want to join us, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio, you've got me, Ian. Danica. Rich Paul. And Vistaprint.com would like to invite you to go try out their service. Just $9.99 for 500 business cards when you use promo code FTL at checkout and if that's not all you need we've, they've also got uh, postcards flyers banners apparel invitations pretty much anything that you could use for your home and office needs vistaprint can help you out and of course it's super easy to personalize your business cards or any of those other items customize the text colors backsides more you can upload your logo to one of their existing designs or upload your entire design it's up to you and their online tool makes it super easy to do. So if you've been thinking about getting business cards but have been frustrated by the insane cost in some of these places, Vistaprint's got you covered. 500 business cards starting at just $9.99 using code FTL. And it's really easy to use. There are tons of layouts and design options. So your card can really reflect you and your business. Get started at Vistaprint.com. And again, don't forget code FTL to get that 500 custom cards for just $9.99. Uh, as we continue here on Free Talk Live, uh, our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It wasn't long ago here on Free Talk Live that we talked about a disturbing story out of New York State regarding college policy about rape. And I'll have to check and pull up the story. I don't think... I'm pretty sure it's not like a statewide law, but... It's like a college rule, basically, that if you don't give verbal consent, affirmative consent, as it is being called, I believe, during sex, on the work up to sex, you know, during foreplay, during actual sex, then 
you can be basically accused of rape. Hmm. And it's a crazy concept. Do they require you to establish proof of some sort of thing of how you how you consented? At that's all? an like excellent a, question. Recording a signed napkin or something. <laughs> I mean, how in the world are they going to be able to hold this accountable? I mean, sorry, but legal stuff definitely seems like a mood killer to me. Yeah, absolutely. Excuse me. Whoa, we can't, we can't get into this quite yet. Let me pull out my legal notebook and hold grab on. Here's a, cons- a condom. Here's yeah. legal lo- notebook. <laughs> grab a consent form so uh, we can actually have. How sex. in the world are they? Maybe they could to put a shrink this? wrap agreement on the condom, where like you give her the condom, and if she opens open the it. wrapper, then that's consent. Hey, hey, that could work. <laughs> they do that with software, don't they? Like, exactly. That's what gave me the idea. This. That's what gave me the idea. That's actually a really good idea. You should patent that. <laughs> hmm. So I'll, ta- I'll tell you more about what happened in New York, but the news tonight is what's happening in California because yeah, it was right. actually California that led the way, if you will, with this particular, uh, it's not legislation quite yet, but it's going to be, you know, if they get away with this, if this becomes a regular thing where, you know, at the college level, this is a requirement to, in order to engage in sexual activity, then it's not going to be long before somebody passes, some state passes a law that says you have to do this in every relationship, in every sexual encounter. Danica, what's happening? Where's the story from? Uh, Stories from New York Times. Governor Jerry Brown put a signature on a bill this month that would make California become the first state to require that all high school health education classes are given lessons on affirmative consent, which is what you were saying, which includes explaining that someone who is drunk or asleep cannot grant consent. Oh, so what does it mean to be drunk? Okay, see, I'm hearing right. different things here because the headline gave us they have to say yes every 10 minutes, but what the body of the story is saying is they can't be passed out. So that's a huge difference. Well, they, the requirement is is that this teacher is claiming, it, this teacher is telling these students that they have to say yes every 10 minutes, and these students, which we'll go into, are definitely confused, and they're asking questions like, is this for real? And they even go through drills about, okay, what's a what's a good way to say, are you good or can we keep going or is this okay? Like it, It's really interesting how yeah, the students is, are reacting. This is as bad mm. as it sounds. This isn't just about having sex with you know somebody who's asleep right. or incapacitated drunk. Uh, this is about every sexual encounter having to have ongoing verbal consent. Meaning, literally asking permission. There's a there's a video that we played on the air, the audio track of it, that the advocates for this thing. And again, in New York, I did pull up the story here from Syracuse.com. Uh, it is a law on college campus. So the, the law that was signed on July 7th in New York requires both parties to obsa- obtain consent for sex and each nibble and caress oh, that sometimes paves gosh. the way. And they showed a video of what this was purportedly supposed to be like. And it literally was a guy continually asking permission to do various different uh, sexual things to his partner. Yeah, the New York Times reported wow. that not only was this signed in by the, by Governor Brown, uh, but that also the, a high school, a urban school of San Francisco, is teaching high school students to keep time during any <laughs> intimate encounter so that their encounter does not slip into rape. So, so it's Whoa. both, yeah. So, so you have to get songs of known length, I guess, and play music in the background. And Maybe they'll have a little sex alarm clock. Song chain. There, there you go. You there you go. Like a chess timer, kind <laughs> right. of. Or a might... stopwatch. Right. Iden Ryan, a student there, asks, "What does that mean? You have to say yes every ten minutes." Pretty much, said Ms. Alum, who's teaching the class. It's not a timing <laughs> thing, but whoever initiates things to another level has to ask. Of course, then again, I have been with women who said yes a couple times a second during parts of the encounter, and it still worked out okay. You know, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, su- I suppose it could go either way. It just it sounds very, very awkward to me. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. I can't even imagine being the teacher whose job it is now to teach this and to not agree with it, right? Because obviously people are going to look at this and say it's ridiculous that um, if somebody doesn't want to have sex, they should just say no and stop. You know, that, that should be right, they're, that should they're be going That's from, too much responsibility. They're going from no means no to yes means yes. Right, and that yes is legally required, at least in the state of New York, for anyone who's in mm-hmm. college. And, and having- yes only lasts for a few seconds. 
<laughs> or, you know, 10 minutes. Uh, so tell me more, Danica. The students did not seem convinced. They sat in groups to brainstorm ways to ask for affirmative consent. They crossed off a list of options. Can I touch you there? No, too clinical. Do you want to do this? Too tentative. Do you like that? Not direct enough. They're all really awkward and bizarre, one girl said. Yeah, it sounds awkward. Now, to be uh, to be fair, the video that they made, they kind of made it look like it was okay, but it never is going to play out like that in real life. It's mm. going to be super awkward and weird and mood killing in order to, you know, continually ask permission to, you know, slide your hand up someone's leg and then further and touch here and there and, you know, to have to ask Every time before you do something, it's lame. Uh, well, how about giving them up front, giving them a list of things that you that might they want do. to do to them at some point, <laughs> and they can have check just... boxes for those that they're <laughs> that down? They <laughs> Supposedly, this happened on Fifty Shades of Grey, too, where she was presented a giant list of stuff. And no, really? I did not read the book. I was just- you watch the movie? No, I was given unfortunate excerpts of it by my friends why that are you, did. Wait, why are you so defensive about this? I mean, no, it's... it's just not something that I would ever even dream about okay, so you wanting wanna... to watch. I see. Uh, so you don't my... want someone to think that you would be interested in I just, watching this. So how about, know. say, claiming Sleeping Beauty or the story of O, or the, would those be off Wait, off Sleeping Beauty? Too? What's wrong with Sleeping Beauty? Well, claiming Sleeping Beauty. It was written by Anne Rice under a... Uh, Wait, Anne Rice writes Under a, a pseudonym. Yeah, she writes a vampire film. So what you, what you, uh, she does, but she also writes erotica. Oh, under yeah. Under a pseudonym, so, so okay. Um, okay. The... the yeah. So anyway, uh, I mean, that's not, an interesting. I'm not saying that I wouldn't read erotic. I just wouldn't read a story about a guy that uses coercion and force and stalks this girl. And no, it sounds like e- weird. Exactly. It's just yeah. it's not something that I would ever want to put my time into. It. I've just no. I've heard excerpts from friends, and I'm like, oh, you you poor thing. It, Sleeping Beauty would violate yeah. these rules because didn't she get kissed while she was asleep? Uh, well, Sleeping Beauty, uh, claiming Sleeping Beauty, they don't. No, I'm not talking There's, about the book. I'm talking about the Disney movie. Didn't oh, Sleeping Beauty the, get kissed while she was asleep by like Prince Charming or whoever the hell yeah, it was? Yeah, after he fought yeah. a dragon and a bunch of thorns. Right, so that well, would be considered the, rape the now truth, in California. Well, the <sighs> truth be told, if somebody comes up and kisses a sleeping chick he doesn't know, I'm going to say he's no Prince Charming. Free talk <laughs> <laughs> And uh, even though uh, the board operator, I believe, should have the music coming up here, we don't have uh, we don't have that. So we're going to keep covering uh, this particular portion of the break. Hopefully, our operator will bring up uh, the commercial break. So apologies to any of our advertisers that are actually missing having their commercials played on the show. I'll unmute you guys as Mike here. Uh, I don't know if our board op is uh, has fallen asleep at the board or is busy putting out some sort of fire. Or whatever. Hopefully everything is okay uh, at the network. But basically anything we say right now shouldn't technically be on the radio. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you can curse because we might still actually be on the radio. Curses. Foiled again. Yeah, we don't actually know. But we should behave as though only the uh, the internet listeners are uh, tuned in at this point. So if you want to join us here, especially with your thoughts on this, not a law yet in California, but... What could be a harbinger of things to come? This is bad news that this is being taken even seriously by anyone at all. The idea that you have to continue to get to gain consent, ongoing verbal consent from a sexual partner is, I think, absolutely it's insulting to the intelligence of both people who are involved in a mutual transaction like this? Maryland, Michigan, and Utah are considering similar legislation it's for scary. colleges. Yeah. It's scary. Wow. Uh, and it starts on the college study campus. Discover there right we go. how you can eliminate we'll be back. study books and wasted study time. At contractorexam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, contractorexam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.contractorexam.com today. 
if you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day -day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com slash FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free 855 450 free is our number and you can also join us via skype at skype username lrn.fm i especially want to hear from you tonight if you think that this affirmative consent concept is a good idea and if you're just tuning in the idea of affirmative consent is that in new york it's now the law on college campuses for anyone engaging in sexual activity they have to give ongoing what's called affirmative consent in california i don't know if it's the law there yet on college campuses but it, it's i'm sorry dan i could try that one more time thanks ian yeah. yeah just a bill being just a bill being signed right now so it may go but i mean this but, the standard that this is actually being considered is like whoa they had done something previously uh okay yes i've confirmed in california they also have an affirmative consent law on college campuses, so only on college campuses. But now what you're telling us, Danica, is there's a new law that was just signed that requires high school students to be told and educated about this affirmative consent concept. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that it's been outlawed to uh, – or that it's illegal to have sex without affirmative consent in right. high school. It's only illegal to do it on a college campus. They're just at confusing this point. students who are already, like, really confused about – About know, sex? Yeah, about I mean, sex. Yeah. how confusing is it to have a different set of rules depending on whether you happen to be in one building or another that might be next door to each other? I grew up on a college campus, and they – there, the the school, the University of Michigan buildings and the buildings of Ann Arbor proper, the businesses and restaurants are all mixed in together. Mm -hmm. So you're not always sure whose Where property you you're on. Yep. So having a different set of rules for sexual consent there is pretty insane. The other thing is, think of the number of false race race rape claims that are going to come in from these uh, high school students who have been taught. One definition of rape, but the law uses a completely different version. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, uh, Rich, I'm sure they'll work on trying to solve that by making this uh, particular rule apply to absolutely everyone. There already have been people in mm -hmm. New York in the state assembly who have proposed just that kind of legislation. So, you know, it hasn't happened yet. 
but give them time and you'll see this happening. And, and you're right. I mean, it's going to result in all manner of rape allegations that ultimately, how do you prove that the ongoing consent was actually happening during, during the sex? In a lot of cases, it's going to be her word or his word versus the other partner. And who knows who's going to be believed in that particular case. Now, if you want to try some uh, civil disobedience on this on this act with me, and you happen to be, you know, of reasonable age and, and appearance, then feel free to send me a headshot, and uh, <laughs> I will consider all offers. <laughs> <laughs> You'll travel out to New York to a college campus just so that you can violate the law. And yeah. some pretty girl. <gasps> yeah. Oh, um, now wait a minute. So who would be who would be uh, con- who would be engaging in the violation? Would you be the one who would be approached by her? She'd be approaching you, right? So then well, you'd have to keep giving affirmative. She's the it. most she's the most initiative. interesting right. thing would be if if she played the aggressive role, right. And I did not give a verbal yes because that's going to give the prosecutors a very. Uh, it's going to be very difficult or, for the prosecutors to prosecute a woman for violating this, this yeah, rule. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point, although I uh, I imagine it would still be a felony rape charge, so whoever would be willing to do something like that would be risking felony uh, charges in order to make that point. Now, if you've seen the jury cases I've seen, you don't have much trust in juries, and I'm sure you're one of the people that doesn't have much trust in them these days, Rich Paul, considering mm-hmm. they they basically sent you up the river. Uh, um. You, you know, know I can't told- really resent the the jury for that because, frankly, I did not make a sufficient argument to to justify jury jury nullification. You know, mm-hmm. I needed to give them more information as to why they didn't uh, nullify, and things might have worked out quite a bit better if they if they can. So, uh, you know, I I share part of that, but yeah, I mean, I've seen some juries return some some verdicts that were absurd even though the law was not contested um i'm i'm trying to think of uh i can't think of there's a really a, good one there's right a now, great but. there's a terrible case uh that's actually very similar to the one the great we, and terrible case that we talked about <laughs> at the beginning of the show with the gentleman who called earlier who was arrested in new york for holding a sign on a an overpass or putting a sign up on an overpass uh, mm-hmm. A couple of our listeners, Benjamin uh, Bartholomew and his brother, were arrested doing the same thing in California, and they were convicted. So in by jury or judge? by a jury, really? And the jury in uh, in post trial interviews, actually, the jurors who were interviewed admitted that they knew that it wasn't illegal what Benjamin and his brother were doing. But they convicted them anyway because they should have listened to the police. Oh, wow. That literally really? was the reasoning and the rationale. The jury knew it wasn't illegal. It was clear that it wasn't illegal what was done. It was clear free speech. They were protesting taxes. They had a taxes equals theft sign that they had hung up on an overpass and were arrested for that. And the jury wow. found them guilty because the cops asked them to take it down. So therefore, they should have done what the cops asked them to do. Wow. So, so what were they charged with disorderly conduct? I think it then? was a disorderly charge. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. I wonder if they uh, appealed. Because that's the kind remember. of case a lot of times trial courts, most of the time really, trial courts don't make uh constitutional law. Usually it's yeah. a case where you have to be convicted and appealed. And of course I that's can true. tell you that appeals don't always win. Right. But that's pretty much the least you can expect if you're if you're hoping to make new law. I think that's true, but I'm just giving it as an example of another jury failure because there are so many mm. fi- jury failures. Uh, you know, it would be it's going to be impossible to find somebody who's willing to try that try out your idea <laughs> as fun as it is of an idea because you could get a camera in there and and, and actually have evidence that you know, that you were not verbally consenting throughout the entire process. And a jury looking at the letter of the law would probably find that girl guilty. Huh. Well, the interesting thing is also I'm still not real clear on whether this has the force of law. On college campuses, it does. On college campuses, that is the definition of rape. In In California and New York, you now have to provide ongoing verbal consent throughout the process in order for it to not be considered rape. Wow. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it applies to college students off of college campus. So I don't know if you mm. could go and hook up at someone's house. Off campus off or campus. something. I'm not sure as to how the law is written about that. 
Well, that that would be very interesting because sometimes people don't tell you the truth about their lives. You know, true. when they're I mean, looking to if... pick you up in a bar or vice versa. Right. That's you true. know, what do you do? I mean, I mean, if astronaut or whatever. Yeah. Well, if that person's really a college student, can you be tricked into accidentally raping them? <laughs> Let's talk to Bruce. He's in California. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Rich Paul. Hey, Bruce. Hi. It just hey. uh, seems like it would be a violation of the Constitution that uh, our freedom. You well, know, I don't know if like, you've noticed, but New York and California are not strangers to violating the Constitution. Well, I know California, we have a murder on death row since the uh, 1970s when he killed five uh, women, and he uh, doesn't deny it, and he tape-recorded it for hours, and he's still on death row. Who's that, Manson? The original... Manson's no, dead. Oh, he's dead? Yeah. When did he no, die? He's not. He didn't die. Um, I don't think he's dead. I read he died. All right, go ahead, Bruce. Sorry. The original prosecutor was Stephen Kay, who prosecuted Charles um, Manson, and he said that Lawrence Bitteker, it was out of Torrance, California, was the worst crime in California history. Oh, wow. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and he was supposed to get death, and that was back in, uh, I think, eighty. And he's still on death row, and yet if they can't enforce that law, how can how are they? We should sue Jerry Brown for not uh, carrying out the law of the execution of uh, Lawrence Bittaker, who executed five young teenage girls. And what made it such such a horrid crime is that he tape recorded it for hours. Oh gosh, I know, and so. Why did? Why are they trying to make up these stupid laws? I would say, if somebody with a criminal record, maybe they should get consent, but not the average. Uh, well, they want to make uh, these yeah. laws because they love putting people in prison. I mean, the already today there are a ridiculous amount of people who are going to prison, mostly men. Uh, for having sex with people who are younger than the age of 18 in states all across the United States. And, you know, these are just more warm bodies for these cold cells so these government bureaucrats and these bureaucracies can have bigger and bigger budgets. Thanks, Bruce, for your call tonight. And it's really just an inhumane, horrible thing. Charles Manson is still alive. He was born in 1934, so he's now 80 years old. Uh, This is Free Talk Live. Hour 3 coming up. When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor, her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit Wendy Joseph Writes Dot com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. BlakeDevelopment.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 16th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.06 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $262. Antiwar.com reports the White House made clear on Wednesday that they oppose any independent investigation of the recent U.S. attack on a Doctors Without Borders hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan, and the Pentagon seems to be doubling down, ensuring that there's not much evidence left for an independent investigator when they get there. Doctors Without Borders on Thursday reported that they were informed that the U.S. smashed into the wreckage of the hospital with a tank, forcing their way in and destroying potential evidence that would be used in a war crimes investigation. U.S. officials claimed that the tank was carrying investigators from the official military inquiry into the matter, though they likely could have gotten into the hospital closed after the attack without using a tank if they had simply asked Doctors Without Borders to let them in. The latest incident emerged amid reports that the Pentagon not only knew the facility was a protected hospital when they ordered it attacked, but that military analysts are continuing to argue that the attack was justified based on speculation a Pakistani spy may have been within the hospital. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports former House Speaker Dennis Hastert will plead guilty to accusations of paying $3.5 million to conceal prior sexual misconduct. U.S. District Judge Thomas Durkin on Thursday set Hastert's guilty plea for October 28th with a written plea agreement to be submitted to Durkin by Monday. An indictment released in May says Hastert paid an anonymous person identified as Individual A $3.5 million to silence illicit activities that Hastert engaged in when he was a high school teacher and wrestling coach between 1965 and 1981 in Yorkville, Illinois. The indictment does not explicitly state what Hastert did, rather federal law enforcement Enforcement officials told the Chicago Tribune that Hastert paid to hide the fact that he sexually abused a Yorkville High School student. In June, Hastert pled not guilty to refusing to report his monetary transactions and to feeding lies to the FBI. The current indictment also says he mapped out bank withdrawals in order to avoid raising red flags and lied about the transactions to the FBI. The withdrawals reportedly began in 2010 and were laid out in increments of $100,000 and $50,000. Hastert later decreased the withdrawal to less than 10000 each to allegedly avoid reporting the money. Both the FBI and the IRS were involved in the investigation beginning in 2013. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports California Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom on Thursday unveiled a ballot initiative aimed at strengthening the state's gun control laws by banning possession of large-capacity magazines and requiring background checks for ammunition purchases. Newsom hopes to put the initiative before voters in the November 2016 election. Speaking in downtown San Francisco at the site of a shooting that killed eight people in 1993, Newsom said elements of the measure, some of which were unable to pass via the legislative process, would be strongly supported by California. California voters. The initiative would also require gun owners to report lost or stolen guns to law enforcement and improve data sharing between the state and federal government's criminal background check databases. It would also set off a process to relinquish guns from convicted felons who are already prohibited from possessing them. To be included on the 2016 ballot, Newsom and his backers would have to gather signatures from 366,000 registered voters who support putting the question on the ballot, a process that could cost $2 million or 
worth more and then raise funds to fend off a likely onslaught of opposition from gun rights advocates. In a statement, NRA spokeswoman Amy Hunter said Newsom's initiative was an attempt to chip away at the rights of gun owners and would do nothing to improve public safety. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. And if you thought things couldn't get more infantile and aesthetically insulting than Fergie, Kesha, or Katy Perry, then you obviously haven't met 22-year-old Karanika, the latest and most horrid talent-bereft pop monstrosity the music industry has ever sadistically forced down the American public's collective throat. She's here with us in the studio right now. What, what? Now tell us, Karanika, how did you first decide that you wanted to be the cipher through which the cynicism of a morally bankrupt industry is channeled? Yo, I just do what I do, know what I'm saying? It's like... People just love my ish. Mm. Right. You are in the middle of your sold out Damn Girl tour. Damn Girl! That's right! <laughs> which is a heinous slap in the face to the English language and will also travel to 47 what? cities, sapping the intellects of every young person along I the way. I said, Damn Girl! That's right! Uh. There's no light in your eyes, Karanika. I got nothing to say to the haters. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, launching into the third hour. Plenty of time. If you want to join us here, you can bring up what you want. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We were talking in the last hour, for those of you just tuning in, about a disturbing story from California that I think you're going to hear more about in the future. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but... As California and New York go, so do a lot of the other state governments around the country. And Danica, the story that you were sharing tonight, Ian, Danica, and Rich Paul in the studio, the story you were sharing from California is about a new law that's been passed. This is now the second law that I know of in California about what's called affirmative consent, Mm -hmm. where two partners uh, in a sexual activity, whoever the aggressor partner is, that's not the right word, but whoever is starting it, if you will, whoever is... Initiating Initi- the initiation or the initiator in the the sexual encounter has to continually garner. Is this okay? Consent. Are you good? Are yeah. you? Yeah. Can I put like my that? hand there? Uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, they have to ask permission at every step along the way. You can't just nibble on someone's ear on your own. You can't just you know feel somebody up on your own. You you know you have to get them to say something verbally to give you permission. Apparently, nodding's not good enough. Eye contact not good enough. Uh, you what know. if she's gagged? That could be a problem. That could that, certainly I think be a that, problem. That would be where your form idea would come into play. Yeah. Rich. You, you come up. You came up with the idea of having a checklist in advance and having the person check off the things that they uh, <laughs> they are willing to consent to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there are a lot of good questions around this. Is like, you know, how many people are going to end up getting charged with rape with these new rules? Now, to be clear, for those of you just tuning in, this does only apply to colleges in uh, California and New York. Now, I'm not an, uh, an attorney. That's not legal advice. But that's my understanding of what these laws yeah, are. Yeah, and there's other states that are considering similar legislature, but as of right now, those are the only two states that have it in effect. Right. And also the news in California, because California has had this in effect. New York is the newest state to add the rules. Uh, the, the new rules in California are that the, in high school sex education classes, the students must be taught about this affirmative consent Which I guess makes sense, you know, if you're going to throw them into college after that, they should probably know that they could get arrested and charged with rape for kissing somebody without asking first. Hmm. So maybe if you're bound for trade school, they should give you a different set of rules for consent that will be appropriate there. Because if the rules at a college are different than the rules for a trade school, they really ought to, you know, the preparatory classes should really prepare you for that or... So what if you had to ask if it was okay to put your hand on uh, the other person during foreplay? What if you had to ask again before touching somewhere else? What if there was a law that said that you had to do this? That's what's happening in New York and California. The law applies only on college campuses. This is from Syracuse.com. At its heart is a simple concept. Instead of no means no, it's yes means yes. And the author here claims that it switches the dynamic of consent in what could be an empowering way. And I don't see what's empowering about this at all. 
I don't see it either. I'm all for giving better sex education, but this is just like the article is saying, it's only going to sow a bunch of confusion because these kids are already confused about their changing bodies. And now, yeah, it's a great you know, point. trying to get them to understand, okay, this is what you need to say, this is what you should do. It's like, uh, really? Because yeah. what if other students in other states, like what if they hook up with a student in another state that has absolutely no idea what they're doing and pushes them away because it's like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, Stop. that's a good point. Or the or the mm. the reverse of that, where another student comes into New York or California to visit friends at a sure. school, and they end up hooking up with one of their friends and buddies. getting into trouble because right. they weren't aware of what was going on. And my my mm. biggest question for this is, how in the world are they going to hold the initiator accountable for this? How I, are they going to find some way to say yes, they did or did not say these things? Because I don't know. we all know that you know, vic, you know, so called victims are capable of lying. Oh yeah. Too. You know, how many stories have we covered where the victims were just outright lying, but the initiator well, still got punished? No matter what mm. precautions you take, the hookup now poses serious legal risks. Peter Lake, director of the Center for Excellence in Higher Education Law, says, You look at the legal system we're building, and it's incredibly risky to hook up with someone you're not married to. It changes the rules of the game, he says. It gives the game rules. The push for restrictive rules and laws comes at a time when attitudes and practices around sex are becoming riskier. So really what this comes from is kind of a puritanical view that hookup culture, as it is called, is a bad thing and that it that there should be some kind of law to to stop it from happening. And that's that's kind of what some of the people who are pushing this legislation are that's where they're coming from on this and we got to give a shout out to the use useful idiots on the left who spent a long time trying to fight the republicans when the re republicans were trying to outlaw sex and now are cheerfully participating in the destruction of the sex life of a nation uh because they're using different rhetoric now oh now it's not because of jesus it's because of empowering the women is that women with a y need you ask <laughs> um <laughs> Toll free number tonight if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Now, uh, let's see. There's a piece here over at Syracuse.com. Lake said college students are already figuring out the workaround to the rules to avoid being caught up in sexual assault allegations. They've realized it's much less risky to hook up with someone who doesn't go to your school. It's hard to investigate on another campus, said Lake. So... Yeah, I guess, you know, if, you, if you're if you in college, you go to a bar in town and you find somebody that you want to hook up with, you just go back to that person's house. <laughs> so you're not having sex on the college yeah. campus. Well, and it's also a good idea not to have sex with people you know well or give your sexual partners your real name under these laws. Um, both of those could be acts of self-defense. <laughs> yeah, and that's unfortunate too, right? Because, you know, if... If you want the relationship to come in, you know, to become something more than just a, a hookup, uh, then you know, if the person doesn't know who you are, they can't get back in touch with you. Right. Okay. You mm. know, there's, you know, there's that risk of not using your own name. If you honestly think it's just going to be a hookup, fine. But I mean, what if it turns into something else? Then you know, you're starting off the relationship by admitting that you lied to the person. Yeah, so that good. that's not a, that's not a good idea. But also, what Rich was saying about hooking up off of campus like if they can keep track of that i mean i know a lot of students such as you know i'm also lived off of campus whenever i went to college so would the rules apply to college students out off of campus or does it apply to all students attending that college for the record yeah. for the record the giving a fake name thing was not serious yeah i gotcha <laughs> <laughs> just playing devil's advocate here toll free number tonight mm. is a 55 450 free the other aspect of this uh the, the suggestion is that one cannot consent if one is drunk so even if one is in a uh, a sexual situation and is giving the ongoing consent but is so-called drunk it will still be considered rape if and they're both drunk, are they both guilty of rape? Good question. Mm -hmm. I suspect they might be because uh, of the crazy laws. I mean, we've seen uh, teenagers being arrested for creating child pornography for taking naked pictures of themselves. So yeah. it certainly wouldn't surprise me if, uh, you know, the mutual rape charges were filed in a case like that. But ultimately, I think that if you are having a drink and you're in a situation in which you could end up, 
you know, having sex with somebody, then that's your choice to have the drink. You right. know that you could end up having sex at the end of the night. And so if you've decided to put alcohol in your body and affect your decision-making ability, I don't think that you should be able to get out of uh, of that personally. I mean, you know, if you don't want to be coerced yeah. into uh, or if you don't want to be persuaded drunkenly into sex, then you shouldn't be drinking, period. Or yeah. I, I mean, there's lots of things I wouldn't want to happen when I was uh, – when I was drinking, you know, I wouldn't want to sure. be, for example, talked into lending a politician a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But you know, if I do get drunk enough that somebody manages to talk me into lending a politician a hundred dollars, that's my lookout. It's, it's your not responsibility. My problem. Uh, or it's not their problem, it's my problem. And also, sure. you know, what is drunk? I could understand if the person is so S-faced that they can't even stand up. That's obviously taking advantage of somebody. Sure. But Legally, drunk is 0 .08, and who has ever had 0 .08 as far as their? How, per, how many blood average out? drinks is that? One yeah. or two, two drinks? Two drinks. Who's, okay, who's, yeah. Who cannot consent to sex after two drinks? Um, I know people who can't consent to sex before two drinks. Well, most <laughs> they people have can. to have a couple drinks. In I see. Them. What <laughs> 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 right. 855-450 free 855-450-3733 El Chapo update coming up Every once in a while you get information that's worth changing your life for This is one such time You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Free Talk Live. We need to legalize the animal trade. The illegal <laughs> bird trade causes the death of hundreds of thousands of birds. Do you know why that hundreds of thousands of birds are dying? Why don't you tell me? The reason these birds are dying is because it's illegal. They have to pack in multiple birds into whatever it is that they're transporting them in. And One would think. when they get across the border and they open up the package, you can damn well bet some of those birds have expired. Yes. So there's a certain percentage rate that just don't make it through. And that's where this number comes from. This hundreds of thousands of uh, birds dying every year because of the illegal bird trade. Now, if it wasn't for the people demanding them, obviously nobody would be bringing them in. So there's people in this country that are demanding birds just like people are demanding cocaine in this country. So the idea that we can stop the bird trade is just as asinine that we can stop the war on drugs. We have a war on birds in this country. So they just don't talk about it. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $2 higher at $1,184 per ounce. Silver is up two cents at $16.18 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $261 US dollars. Check out our Halloween special on Australian silver spiders. And if you've been looking for silver eagles, we've lowered that price too. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here if you want. The toll free number is 855 450 free. And maybe you're a supporter of this idea of affirmative consent, as it is called, sort of this ongoing process of continually rechecking in with your sexual partner just to make sure that they consent to you moving on with more sex. Uh, that's actually what's happening in California and New York, where it's the law for college campuses and or college students. I haven't read the law itself, but that's my understanding. Uh, if you want to correct us or comment, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I got to say, on behalf of my generation to anybody who's like 25 or younger, mm -hmm. we really dropped the ball. And I'm sorry about the whole liberty thing because we were way freer than you were. When you know, when I was eighteen, you're in your early forties now, right? I, I'm forty six. Forty six. So, okay. uh, Mid forties. Yeah. And you know, so many things they just said, "Oh, boys will be boys." That they will put kids today in prison for, yeah. or girls sure. will be yeah. girls. It wasn't a gender thing. It was just uh, there was some acceptance that you know people who weren't adult yet weren't adult yet and therefore you didn't give them adult po adult uh penalties for childish acts and that idea has disappeared from jurisprudence in america and that's too bad yeah you're right about that i just actually heard today about yet another one of these stories uh and i didn't actually pull up the story maybe i can find this cormega copening a 16-year-old from fayetteville has been charged with possession of child pornography for having pictures of himself on his phone. Now, the real killer is that his mom apparently consented to the police searching his phone in the first place. Oops. So his <laughs> own mother ended up getting her son charged with felony child pornography charges. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be criminals. Don't give <laughs> consent for yeah. your kids. Don't let them in their rooms. Don't let the cops don't in the door. Don't let the cops anywhere near your kids. Uh, so we will see if I can pull up some more information about that. But you know, the, this whole idea of affirmative consent—it's really uh, just absolutely insulting. Uh, and the idea suggests that one cannot have, uh, one cannot be drunk and consent to sex. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't even understand what that means. It's, you know it's going to be the legal definition of drunk. So if the person has had two beers or two drinks and they consent to sex, sorry, the law is going to say in California and New York, at least on college campuses, that they have not actually, in point of fact, consented and that that was an act of rape. And I look, I understand the concerns that some people have about hookups, right? I get it. Sure, yeah. You know, Life will punish people on, on its own for the hookup culture through sexually transmitted diseases. You don't need anything more than that. Yeah. Well, if they're not careful. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure that if you screen properly, you can probably get away with it. If you screen properly, but odds are good that's not happening with hookups, right? Hookups are generally, you know, quick sex that happens on a mm. short-term basis, not part of a relationship. All right, yeah. So the more sexual partners you have, the more likely you are to pick up some sort of social disease. Probably true. Yeah, uh, But that's good, not good enough for the politicians. They need to grandstand. They need to act like they're doing something about this. And, you know, I don't say this to minimize the fact that sexual assault occurs. Obviously it does. And it's a serious crime when it actually does occur. But having sex with somebody that is not constantly consenting by saying yes to every request that you make is not the same in my book as uh, as sexual assault. 
I think, you know, hmm. if someone says no, that's sexual assault. But for someone to not say yes over and over again is not in my book. But I don't write the books. I don't write the laws. And you're going to see more of these laws, I think, as time goes on. It would be interesting to make a porn flick where they obeyed that rule. Make it an actual porn <laughs> flick. Oh Do gosh. your best to make it sexy, but have them actually obey that rule and, and see if, you know, any of them can, can you know, perform under those circumstances, even the professionals. <laughs> well, editing can uh, can help with performance in, uh, in, the, in that circumstance. But, yeah, I, I definitely uh, see where you're coming from. Yeah. Well, of course, even if you had a fluffer stand by, you'd have to get constant consent from her. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so you can join us here. We've got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Here's the story from, uh, let's see, uh, Eyewitness 11 News, ABC, 11.com, Fayetteville's WTVD reporting a high school quarter uh, high school quarterback has agreed to a plea deal that will get him out of felony charges that could have forced, uh, seen him forced to register as a sex offender. Cormega Zion Kopenning, age 17, faced charges of sexual exploitation of a minor because uh, he had photos found on his cell phone. Investigators said the teen and his girlfriend were sexting images to each other, and the photos were discovered during an investigation of another case. The charges stem from an incident last October, and the couple were charged in February, so they charged his girlfriend as well. Copening transferred to the high school, Jack Britt High School, the school year and was starting quarterback. Uh, he was benched while school officials investigated the allegations, but has since been reinstated. Investigators said the sexting happened while Copening was a student uh, last year. They say that it is illegal in North Carolina for anyone under 18 to receive or send sexually explicit photos with a cell phone. And many teens don't realize the seriousness of the charges such behavior could bring. And how would they know how serious it is? It doesn't seem that serious. It's just a naked picture. Everyone's doing it, aren't they? Yeah. At least that's the way it seems, I'm well, sure, for uh, for young people. Nobody ever sends me any of those. It's kind well, of disappointing. You can get out your email if you want, Rich, and maybe you'll... Uh... <laughs> Maybe you'll get lucky. You, you just there might. You go. Let me make a throwaway email address. Maybe you, I'll do that next I was going to say, you probably don't want the teenagers to send them to you, Rich, because then that would be uh, possession of child pornography and uh, felony charges. Uh, true. Uh, so let's see here. As part of the plea agreement, all felony charges were dropped. He agreed to two misdemeanor counts of so-called disseminating harmful material to minors. Exact, exactly what is it that's harmful about this? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it makes her sad because she can see your Johnson, but it's not in person. <laughs> I, I'm trying to imagine what the harm could be. I mean, maybe she gets all excited and, you know. The suggestion, of ah. course, is that the harm is that, well, it's dangerous to have sex, sexy pictures of yourself out there because. Not as dangerous as prison. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> You're trying to protect these people by throwing them in prison. Are you daft? Right. And certainly not as dangerous as a felony charge when you get out of prison. I mean, you want to talk about life ruining? The idea is that mm -hmm. if you have a naked picture of yourself on the internet, that somehow that's going to hurt you in the future. Like you can't get a job because somebody's going to Google your name and then this, you know, naked picture you took of yourself in your bathroom at age 17 is going to show up and somehow you know the boss is going to be angry about that and not give you the job i mean look it's not uncommon for yeah. people to take naked pictures it's more common now than it has ever been because yeah, sure you yeah. know back in the day when you wanted to take a naked picture of yourself you had to do it with a film camera you'd have to take a whole roll of pictures and then hopefully you know three or four of them came out good and then you had to you know, take it in to have it developed, which Duh. means the developer... You have to be careful where you develop it also. Right. The developer is seeing all of your naked pictures, and so people aren't as Digital likely cameras. to do that. Digital right. cameras, my friend. Digital <laughs> cameras have solved that problem, so now naked photos of people are far more ubiquitous. So therefore, why is it even an issue? I mean, it's so common. 855-450-free, 855-450-3733. Drug Lord El Chapo, we'll tell you about him. Coming up. You've got to take a state a construction great. license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today.
Turn on the news and you'll hear stories of natural disasters, political unrest, and financial crisis. In times of uncertainty, how will you take care of your family's most basic needs? Food Insurance, America's most trusted provider of freeze-dried emergency food, has solutions that fit your family's needs and budget. Our meals are delicious, nutritious, and come with a guaranteed 25-year shelf life. For a limited time, we are sending a free freeze-dried meal to all listeners of this program. Go to foodinsurance.com and request your free meal today. That's foodinsurance.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Here's an urgent alert from the Student Loan Hotline. The average student loan debt is $25,000. Have you been out of college for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? If you are struggling with paying off your student loan, if you are past due, we can help. Nationwide Student Loan Relief can now restructure your student loans. We can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop harassing collection calls, and even eliminate your student loan payment. If you can't afford your student loans or if you're past due and you need help, you must call right now. We will restructure your loan or your money back and that's a guarantee. So call the Student Loan Hotline right now. 800-291-2865-800-291-2865-800-291-2865-800-291-2865. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up the latest on... Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the drug lord who has escaped from prison twice in his lifetime, the most recent time tunneling out of a uh, a lockup in, I don't remember which part of Mexico it was, but uh, they tunneled under the facility right up to his room, and he escaped, I believe, on some sort of a motorbike in an underground tunnel and has since been uh, on the run. Could we get some how-to manuals from them for free keen? Because I'd really like it if next time I was in jail, somebody did that for me. Yeah, I mean, here's how you do it, Rich. You uh, have a billion-dollar, uh, multi-billion-dollar drug cartel with incredible resources on the outside. That helps. That helps okay, so we should start with building a drug cartel for dummies and then move on from there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then learn a thing or two about digging in the Mexican uh, desert. Freedomsphoenix.com every day uncovers the secrets and exposes the lies. Readers of Freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news 
that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. FreedomsPhoenix.com has up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com, get signed up for their free daily dispatch. Again, that's FreedomsPhoenix.com. As we continue here, of course, we will take your calls and thoughts. Our toll-free number, 855-450-3733. According to Mark Potter over at NBCNews.com, fugitive drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman is believed to be suffering from injuries to his leg and face as he continues to evade Mexican authorities. Mexican Marines zeroed in last week on the Sinaloa cartel kingpin after U.S. drug agents intercepted cell phone signals suggesting that El Chapo was hiding at a ranch near Cosala in the rugged Sierra Madre Mountains in western Mexico, according to three sources with knowledge of the operation. The Marines raided the ranch in helicopters, but get this, the Marines were forced to turn back after taking fire from suspected Guzman security forces. Hey, you wanted a war on drugs. You finally got yourself a war. <laughs> There's finally a war happening. Because this is one of the points that I've made mm-hmm. previously about the war on drugs, Rich uh, and, and Danica, and that is that the war is really one-sided if you think about it. Like mm-hmm. The war is the government versus the people. And the government continuing to destroy people's lives, destroy their homes, their families, uh, take people out of their jobs, destroy productivity by arresting people who use and sell drugs. But it's very rare that you see the other side fighting back. Normally when there's a war, you have two sides fighting one another. But it's it's almost never that you hear about a drug dealer fighting back against the the government. In this case... Uh, Mr. El Chapo did fight back when the Marines yeah. and his, uh, his his soldiers, if you will, or his security agents fought back and turned away the Marines. So how long is it going to be before uh, the people of Compton start lobbing missiles into uh, Sacramento like the Palestinians? Probably um, not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen because the war on drugs historically and will always be a one-sided war. But look, mm. look what happens when when the drug the drug lord actually has his agents shoot back at the Marines. The Marines turn around and hightail it out of there. Mm-hmm. So they're obviously not willing to really put it all on the line for this war on drugs. Oh. Well, it, it will be interesting to see if they actually go back with reinforcements. They did. Be- they later, uh, after they turned back, after taking fire, they later entered the camp on foot and discovered cell phones, medication, and two-way radios, but I imagine they'd already taken off. So his Guz- Guzman and his accomplices are believed to have fled on ATVs. So they bought mm-hmm. themselves enough time to clean out the camp and uh, mm-hmm. and get out of there. Yeah, well, the agorist theory is actually that there will come a time as private agorist security forces grow and as the government begins to collapse, maybe uh, due to an inflationary crack-up boom or something like that, that there may well come a time when your agorist protection agency will even be able to protect you from the government. It would Um, be an amazing time. It really happened. would. That would be the that's beginning the, of the end. That's the agorist end game. That's how the agorist end game starts. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Mike is listening in Minnesota. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Rich Paul. Mike? How are you doing? Uh, hey, good. Go ahead with your you thoughts. Um, you know, I was listening to the show the other day when you guys were talking about, uh, you know, training camps well. In 2006, I worked at the bus station, and I don't know if you know it or not, but they found an Al-Qaeda training camp in Ohio, and most of the guys were going there by Greyhound bus. I didn't know that. Wow. I had not heard that story. Yes. Hmm. And you know, sadly, we just uh, you know watched for young guys that carried backpacks and cell phones and uh, kind of kept an eye on them, and most people don't realize how many actual bomb threats in that come through a bus station that you know we have to investigate, but we try and do it on a low key because there's always lots of luggage left just abandoned and you don't nowadays you just don't know anymore Mm. so uh what you're saying is you would target young males with backpacks and shake them down no not shake them down or anything just kind of uh keep the younger guys were afraid to be in the same room with them and but uh you know they were worried that if they blew up the place then uh of course, no matter where you are or on something like that, you're going to go. But mm-hmm. it was just an idea that kind of consciously keep a note of it and see what uh, activities were, although we did that to everybody because 
we were murder capital of America at the time I worked there. So it was, uh, you know, not the best place. Well, thank you for sharing but that. I, I don't, I don't know if I was here when that original conversation was uh, was happening. So the point of your call is to just talk about uh, bus station security that that you were part well, of. Well, no, just that I, I, somebody on your show was saying that they don't believe there was any kind of training camps or anything in there, but yes, there was, and I just wanted to, you know, get that thought out that yes, it was there, and yes, you know, we have to be uh, more conscious of things and not necessarily be, you know, invading people's privacy, but you just have to be conscious of things. Gotcha. So you were just sort of being aware of the the people that were around you rather than uh, than shaking them down. Were you private security? No, I never. I never. Yes, I, I never shook down anybody okay. unless I was asked by the company or by an individual that was being harassed. Got it. Mike, thanks for calling okay. and sharing your thoughts here tonight. And that's the difference between private security. Uh, one of the differences between private security and, and the government is a government agent in the same role would absolutely have been shaking people down because they can. Sure. Whereas private security has to please their customers. And if the private security agent picks the wrong guy to shake down and then does that, you violated that person's rights. You violated that person's right to privacy. And even if you could argue that, well, they don't have a right to privacy, they're on private property. If we want to search them, we can. That's fine. You can have a policy like that. But that's going to upset customers if they're being treated like well, let's say prisoners, because that's how you treat a prisoner is you stop them when you, you know, you're suspicious of them if you're a prison guard and you can treat them uh, and subject them to whatever kind of shakedown that you want to. You can toss their room, you can search their person, you can strip them down, you can search their cavities, their body cavities. So, uh, yeah, that's the difference between private security and uh, and government. Yeah, and even if private security, even if there was a thing where, well, if you want to stay on this property, you have to submit to a search, mm -hmm. under any theory of anarcho-capitalist ethics that I've ever heard, you would still have the option of just turn ar turning around and walking away, right, you which you don't always property. have at airport security. Once you've passed a certain point at airport security, my you understanding is the security. they're going to make you stay. Yeah, well, even if, right, yeah, even if you eventually leave the airport, you still have to go through the security screening. Even if you, at that point, then turn around and leave, you have to go through the screening once you've entered mm -hmm. the, the secure area. It's absolutely true. So you can join us here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Authorities did give chase on uh, Mr. Guzman El Chapo, as he is called, the uh, Sinaloa drug cartel leader who's now escaped from prison twice in a decade and a half. Uh, and they are believed to have encircled the fugitive within a two-mile radius. But a week and a half after the raid, officials are losing hope that Guzman's capture is imminent. The massive manhunt continues amid new revelations about Guzman's escape from a maximum security prison in July. And that was in Altiplano, Mexico. Prison security video previously made public but without audio was published again with sound. Loud hammering can be heard on the footage before Guzman rises from his cot and slips through a hole in the cell floor into a tunnel beneath the prison. Apparently nobody noticed the loud hammering occurring <laughs> in this prison. Uh, more on the way. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. 
The human body is more than 60% water. Your brain and muscles are 75% water. And your blood is 92% water. Water is vital to your body, and alkalizing your water is the key to keep it running at its best. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops keep your entire body healthy, boosts energy, promotes weight loss, and even fights cancer. Call 800-518-7615 or go to AlkaVision.com to find out more. That's ALKAVision.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Right now, it's the remaining moments of this edition of Free Talk Live. You can join us here on our toll-free line. It's 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. want to invite you to support Free Talk Live via the AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And we're always looking to get the uh, ideas of liberty into more people's heads around the globe. And there are different ways to do that. One of them is by bringing new radio stations on with our show. Another one is by expanding our satellite footprint. And further, uh, bringing new internet listeners on board as well. So if you want to help us do those things and spread the ideas of freedom, then it's five bucks a month for you to become a Free Talk Live amplifier. You get access to the AMP-only Facebook group, the AMP-only, uh, let's see, the AMP-only, oh God, not the forum. We shut the forum down. <laughs> the uh, AMP-only <laughs> Facebook group. RIP forum. <laughs> yeah. The, well, the forum's actually still there. It's just, uh, it's only accessible by, you can only read it. You can't post to it anymore. So it's sort of there as an archival uh, kind of thing. Although it's still very funny to read uh, Dave's posts. <laughs> yeah, I think some of his are still there. A lot of them were deleted ultimately by the, the moderators. But uh, anyway, so yeah, as you're an amplifier, you get access to the Facebook group. There's the Amp Only phone lines as well. And you get the Amp Only podcast. So how about that? Go check out the details at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP, like advertise, market, and promote. Amp.freetalklive.com. And that money allows us to market Free Talk Live more effectively. Uh, it does not go towards paychecks. It is helping us get on more stations and spread the ideas of freedom. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. How about a little bit of good news, guys? I mean, it's been a, a tough night. Uh, I guess it's good news that the, that uh, El Chapo got away from the Marines in Mexico. So how about a little mm. more good news uh, instead of all this downer stuff about people going to prison for taking pictures of themselves or having sex with this ridiculous affirmative uh, consent law that's happening in New York and California. Here's something from our very own state of New Hampshire. 
NHPR, New Hampshire Public Radio, reporting uh, just a couple days ago on the city of Franklin, New Hampshire, <laughs> has dropped its youth curfew following pressure from the New Hampshire ACLU. Bite it, Franklin. <laughs> In a statement, this is great news, Mayor Ken Merrifield and the Franklin City Council cited the cost of defending the ordinance in court in making their decision. The translation there is that defending the ordinance in court would be costly and an abject failure. Mm. Uh, because New New Hampshire is not a what they call a home rule state. Uh, a home rule state is where cities can just make whatever rules they want for themselves, uh, just sort of independently of the state. In New Hampshire, cities and towns can only do what they're authorized to do by state statute. So in order for a curfew to be possible, the state would likely have to, the state government, the the legislature, would have to authorize towns to have a curfew. So basically they pass a prototype laws and then towns can either opt in to the state statute or opt out of it? It's my understanding of how it works, and I'm by no means a political expert here uh, in New Hampshire, but that is my understanding. And a lot of times the people in the towns, the politicians, will gripe and, and bemoan the idea that it's not a home rule town, they, or that, that it's not a home rule state, because they want more power. This, the, the fact that it's not home rule restricts the things that these governments can do, for the most part. Now, mm. here in our own Keene, New Hampshire, they illegally passed a law against spice and, uh, and other, uh, these uh, not illegal drugs, but uh, the, you know, the synthetics, as we've discussed mm. on, on Free Talk Live. And ultimately, the state did end up passing a law banning synthetics in all of New Hampshire, as I understand it. So the law did sort of become legal over time, but the city attorney, in advising the city councilors when they were looking at this issue, the city attorney did point out uh, to them that, look, this thing's not going to hold up. I mean, because whenever they, they make new ordinances, they usually consult with the city attorney and they say, can you make sure that this is legal? And mm. the city attorney basically told them, yeah, I mean, you can pass it, but it's probably not going to hold up if anybody challenges it in court. So it's that was him admitting that they were doing something they didn't have the authority to do. So that they can still do it, and that's what Franklin did. They passed this curfew, and now they're backing down on it. The curfew would have prevented children younger from 16 from being in public places after 9 o'clock on weeknights and 11 o'clock on weekends. Well, it would have prevented it in the same source that drug laws prevent people from getting high and gun laws prevent people from shooting each other. Meaning that uh, young people who are caught outside would be the ones who get in trouble. The ones who are not caught would not be prevented. Exactly. Uh, Gilles, Gilles Bissonnette, legal director for the New Hampshire ACLU, praised the decision, adding that the curfew's wide scope would have infringed on the constitutional rights of minors. He said this type of ordinance would ban, for example, a 15-year-old from running an errand for his mother, who has to stay home to take care of a much younger sibling at 9 o'clock on a Thursday night. Franklin reinstated the curfew last month following reports from local police and residents of unsupervised children out late at night. In their statement, Franklin officials called on state lawmakers. That's all they had. They didn't have, like, a crime or a complaint. <laughs> Just They were there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody probably got egged or something like Why that. Why did you know. outlaw the children? Because they were there. Well, you know, with children comes law-breaking, right? Teenage boys. Board. Gotta keep those children in check. Yeah. Uh, Franklin officials called on state lawmakers to enact legislation that would make it possible for a curfew to survive a legal challenge. And I hope that that never happens uh, in New Hampshire because young people should have rights too. And if you believe in the idea of rights then you should believe in the idea that young people have them because they're people, they're human beings. And it doesn't matter that they're under some arbitrary age dictated by some government bureaucrat. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you can just protect people from everything is insane. I mean, we've, we're moving rapidly, and we've talked about this a lot, about moving toward this culture of cowardice, which where all which carries risk is forbidden. Mm. And the thing that people don't understand is everything they do carries risk. 
Every move you make carries some kind of a risk. You cannot take your risk to zero, and your tastes and risk are not necessarily the same as your neighbor's tastes and risk. That's one of the huge right. differences that are documentable between people. Most people would never want to be Evil Knievel, but That's Evil true. Knievel did. <laughs> And, and he, you know, he has a right to be him. Absolutely. And uh, and and people should be able to go out at night. And it shouldn't matter what their age is, even if there are crimes being committed, even if there's something naughty going mm. on somewhere in town. That doesn't mean that all teenagers are bad. It doesn't mean that all teenagers are going to cause trouble. But, you know, if they really did care about teenagers and stopping them from doing these kind of things, like, you know, toilet papering someone's house or egging or whatever mm. it is it you know, smashing mailboxes, whatever teenage boys do, setting off pipe bombs. Uh, if they really wanted to stop that from happening, they should legalize working. Because There you go. There you go. Because teenagers can't really get a job, especially under the age of 16. And this yeah, law, it's very hard mm-hmm. for teenagers nowadays to get jobs that aren't like yard work or babysitting even. Right. Mm-hmm. This law is specifically applicable to chil- to people. They use the term children, which I find insulting for, for teenagers. Uh, But uh, for people under the age of 16, that would be illegal. So 14, 15-year-olds who can legally work would Mm. not be able to do that, uh, you know, under this law at nighttime. But further, if you want people to be responsible, give them responsibility. Give them the opportunity to be responsible. When I was a teenager, I was working as soon as I could legally do so, at least at age 16, uh, mm. There just weren't very many jobs available at 14 and 15 because the, the state stands in the mm. way. They make it near impossible for an employer to employ a 14 or 15-year-old. It becomes more possible at age 16 and 17, but it's still harder to employ a 16 or 17-year-old legally than an 18-year-old. Mm. And so it's hard to find work sometimes as a teenager. If it were legal for teens to work, then they'd be busy doing something else besides screwing off you mm. know, in the middle of the night. Yeah, my first job was at 14. I, I worked for Cottage Inn Pizza, and I just walked through campus uh, distributing flyers for them. Perfect. Uh, and then some, and then I'd come back in in the evening, and I'd back them up on uh, answering phones because they'd get a lot of business when when that happened. And yeah, that, there's no reason that a 14 year old kid should not be able to do that. Yep. Uh, except, of course, the minimum wage. That's one because reason, he yeah. might well not be worth uh, as much as a minimum wage. This is aside from any, you know, you can't hire anybody under sixteen well, for right. anything laws, the, which the do wage. exist in some places. And the other, the other factor is coming back to what you were talking about, Rich, with this super overprotective society, where oh, he's fourteen, so we can't let him out into the world to experience things and to actually learn by doing. And getting out because, you know, you mm-hmm. want somebody to be able to get along with other people, put them to work. Mm-hmm. Put them in a place where they have to deal with the public and their coworkers. Not just that, but it would, it would be great if kids could take a couple years off school and then go back when they're at those rebellious years. Mm, sure. That's a good point. Uh, it'd be great if they could just take school off entirely and just, you know, forget about government school and learn stuff on their own. And that's unschooling, which is, I think, a pretty cool idea. Hey, check out more of Rich Paul, The Church of the Invisible Hand. You can find that on Facebook. And uh, we'll join you again tomorrow night over at freetalklive.com. Current. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? 
Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Off the Air Live is next after the news. Here. From Kansas. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Keenvention is coming up fast October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Imagine someone in your community getting in their car, turning on the radio, and hearing the Liberty Radio Network. You can make that vision a reality with your own micro radio station. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how you can put our programs on the air in your area. You can have lrn.fm running around the clock, and you can even add in your own local shows. Building a radio station is simple, but programming isn't. That's where lrn.fm comes in. Learn more at broadcast.lrn.fm. That's broadcast.lrn.fm. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $2 higher at $1,184 per ounce. Silver is up $0.02 cents at $16.18 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $261 US dollars. Check out our Halloween special on Australian silver spiders. And if you've been looking for silver eagles, we've lowered that price too. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. The latest episode of Peace, Love, Liberty Radio is next after the news. Here on the Liberty Radio Network. lrn.fm. Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. In the walls Of the war machine. Well, the war machine rages on in this situation that I'm about to tell you about. It actually is raging on by destroying evidence of a possible war crime. You might recall that I talked uh, about a week and a half, almost two weeks ago, about the uh, Doctors Without Borders Hospital that was bombed repeatedly by the U.S. military. Doctors Without Borders has called for an independent war crimes investigation. Well, the U.S. government and the U.S. military is not happy about that. And, well, what did they decide to do? Well, the U.S. military decided that they would destroy the evidence. I, I am not making this up. The U.S. military has destroyed the evidence in the Kunduz Afghanistan hospital that was operated by Doctors Without Borders. The story comes from The Guardian, 
And they say a U.S. tank forced its way into the shell of the Afghanistan hospital destroyed in an airstrike 11 days ago, prompting warnings that the U.S. military may have destroyed evidence in a potential war crimes investigation. The October 3rd attack on the Doctors Without Borders, uh, they, they actually in the article use the French name Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF, but that translates to Doctors Without Borders. But I will, for the remainder of this story here, refer to it as MSF. On October 3rd, the attack on the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Kunduz killed 10 patients and 12 staff members of the group. In a statement on Thursday, the medical charity known as Doctors Without Borders said they were informed after Thursday's intrusion that the tank was carrying investigators from a U.S. NATO Afghan team, which is investigating the attack. Yes, so the U.S. government, in conjunction with the Afghan government and NATO, are investigating themselves. Surprise, surprise. MSF said, quote, their unannounced and forced entry damaged property, destroyed potential evidence, and caused stress and fear. The Pentagon did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the reported intrusion, which came as new evidence emerged that U.S. forces operating the, in the area at the time of the attack knew that the facility was a hospital. Yes, that's right. They knew it was a hospital. They knew that, you know, the international humanitarian law, the laws of war say that you're not supposed to bomb hospitals. Hospitals are to be protected, as are members of the clergy and those who are no longer fighting or people who were never fighting to begin with. They knew that this was a hospital. It was protected. Don't bomb it. But they did so anyway. The article from The Guardian continues. It says, U.S. Special Operations analysts were gathering intelligence on the hospital days before the attack because they believed a Pakistani operative was using it as his base, according to the R report by the Associated Press, citing an unnamed former intelligence official. And even if, even if, th this is me speaking, not the article, even if there was a Pakistani operative using the hospital as his base, it still could not be bombed without at least warning the operators of the hospital that such an attack was going to happen. That, again, in accordance with the international humanitarian law, a.k.a. the laws of war, a.k.a. if you violate international humanitarian law, you are committing a war crime. That's right. War crimes are violations of international humanitarian law. War crimes are violations of the laws of war. Bombing a hospital without announcing that you are bombing the hospital is a war crime. When the hospital calls you to say you're bombing our hospital and you continue